and Ross. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Call or text at 916-339-1140. It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross. On- Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> well, I get my stuff in the mail today. I'm waiting for that pistachio extract. I'll be over my dad's tonight doing uh, Ninja Creamy lessons. That okay. sounds, if you don't, wow. You know, out of context, if you don't know what that is, it sounds really strange. Uh, Not even in context. The ninja, mm, gross. Ninja Creamy is a an ice cream maker, for those of you who do not know. It. I got my dad one for his birthday. And, I got to, uh, I'm waiting for this stuff to make because his favorite flavor is pistachio. So, uh, I want to thank the drive guys yesterday. Did a little crossover in the afternoon. Oh, yeah? Sort of. Yeah. They were, mm-hmm. sort of. Well, they were, they were doing the whole, uh, like, uh, how could you want the season to end? And then, uh, I had a guy from Boston and a, uh, or not from Boston, from Philly. Isn't he from Philly? That's a respectable li- job. Isn't he from Philly but lived in Boston, right? Yeah. I, right? Okay. And the guy that did the funeral in 02 for the uh, Lakers telling me, you know, you got to have faith. I mean, he had a lot of faith. He did have a lot of faith. No, it was good. Uh, it was good-natured banter. But then in the end, I did ask Kyle. I said, Kyle, do you have faith they're going to make the first round? And he goes, yeah. I said, okay. If the Kings make the first round of the playoffs, I will stand outside our studios for an hour with a sign that says Kyle was right and I was wrong got to have faith go kings and if they don't then you have to stand outside our studio for an hour you can pick the hour that says dave was what oh like outside here outside no outside okay who's he gonna show the sign to oh that's not the point it's just the it's the photo op you kidding me the photo op of that Uh, that saying dave was right i was wrong how silly was i to have faith in this team did he agree to that nope nope why would he agree to that? I, oh, I said if he said you got it, he had faith. No, but that's, the whole thing was about faith. That's not a fair payoff. Why? Because, I was going to do the same thing. Yeah, but if you lose, you're happy. No, I'm not. You're sure. not. No, 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 no. And I'm glad you're bringing that up because that that is what drives me nuts about some. Here's the thing. There is no, well, I shouldn't say there's no worse fan. That's an overstatement. <clears throat> Fans that are on my radar that need a spanking for being bad, I'll say it like that. It drives me nuts when fans, I I understand if you don't have faith in your team. I understand if you're pessimistic, but obviously that's the world I live in. But if it ends up that the team does better than you thought and exceeds your expectations and is successful, if that either if that doesn't make you joyous, then you're not a fan of the team. You're a fan of your narrative and holding receipts, and that to me is gross. If if the Kings were to make everything I am saying I don't have faith in, if they were to turn that on its ear, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. I I want to hold that sign. Exactly. What I'm saying is, oh, you're saying I'd be happy. Oh, I thought you were saying the opposite. No. Oh, okay. All right. See, I thought, you would be happy. I, yes, I would be. And then if Kyle loses, everybody's upset. Two things. Number one, you should be on my side just because. It's a great bit. Secondly, all I'm saying is if you have faith, put your faith on the table. If you have faith that's going to happen, that's great to say. But then when I I put up a bet on it, a a good-natured bet, and they got, oh, I just think your punishments should be worse. It should, there should be some sort of two-to-one punishment. Because if I'm wrong, I mean, fine. I would go two hours to his one. That's fine. That's two-to-one. No, I think he should be in someplace more public. No. Yeah. No. Because, oh, oh, you don't want to take the bet? <laughs> no, because I, I have, I don't have faith. Well, I guess it's right. It's I don't have faith in them winning. So I also, you should be fine. But you, should, I, you can make it 10 to 1. But here's the mistake. I also don't have faith in I don't have faith in this team. 
to do anything. I know they're going to win or lose. I get it. I know that one thing's going to happen. Yeah, but you don't think it's going to happen. So why wouldn't it? Why would it matter if it's ten to one? Well, why would it matter if it's a hundred to one? Because right. I, I, I don't. There's a difference between not having faith and believing it's like impossible. Like I'm not saying they can't do it. Right. I'm saying I don't believe they'll do it. My, I don't have a strong belief about them. I don't have a strong belief that they'll do it. Hey, I don't have a strong belief that they won't do it. Two hundred fifty thousand. You got the bag. What are you I'm, doing? I'm, if I have 250000 and I have to make a decision, mm-hmm. keep in mind, by the way, in, in your example here, my decision-making process could say, I believe they will do this thing 50.1%, and I believe they won't do it 49.9%. That, that could, I have to make a decision. Right. So I would, if I had the bag of $200,000, $250,000, I would bet that they will not make the first round. That I will bet that. But boy, would I agonize over it mm-hmm. because I can absolutely. Now, obviously, they have a path to make the. Of course, they have a path to make the first round. Just saying. I feel like I won that exchange, but I'm a constituency of one. Oh, good morning, how are you? Good morning, great. Uh, what did I have for you guys? Uh, oh, um, apparently, uh, the only other little Nas X fan uh, in the building, uh, according to Chris Lott, is me and uh, Kyle Ledbetter. Okay, That's I didn't important. say that. I oh, said- that you know of? I apologize. Yes. You're right. You said. You can ask him about it tomorrow. <laughs> Shut up. Yes, Kyle Ledbetter will be joining us in the morning. Does he still do the, uh, does he still do, oh, wait, we don't do updates anymore, I guess, right? So. Uh, we're going to have Mud Masters updates tomorrow. Is he going to do, like, good morning? I have to find out. Mud Masters updates brought to you by Nature Wood. Nature Wood is, is on, on your side. side. I feel why ever since that meeting with the lawyers now we do stuff like I'm like <laughs> do we just, was that a federal crime? I, I was I was looking for I, you'll love nature wood. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. <laughs> I uh I was looking up today. It's been like three years since an album from this guy. Come on. And that was his debut album. It was awesome. How are you not a little not as X fan? Just I'm not. old. <laughs> well, yeah, but you can look, look, I fully I fully admit that like there's a lot of, I'm far less into that newfangled music than, you know, I was when I, you know, you're, you're a kid or you're, you're whatever, you're in the, you're in the relevant age. Yeah. And everything is, you know, oh, this guy, this girl, this guy, this girl, they're all great. Now it's like, I very much kind of, you know, a lot of it, you know, that meme where the guy's taking his headphones off, like that's me with, with some of it, but like, you know, occasionally one sneaks through where I'm like, oh. Billy Eilish, I love that album. Post Malone, I like that guy. Lil Nas X, I like that guy. You don't have you don't have that at all. You pretty much stick to your old stuff. Um, and like the newer bands that sound like the old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you remember off the top of your head what's the last like uh, what's the last new group? What's like the newest group that you're like legitimately into? The ist ist. See, you ask these questions, I know. I, you're right. <laughs> and you you're, know you're going to get an answer like you're right. that. You're right. You're right. You're 100 percent right. That is not your fault. That is my fault. Jason, do you is any any? Yeah, the is to is. <laughs> is that like uh, is that the in season tournament? In season tournament? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> is that what that is? It's instead of the one shining moment. It's the ist, <laughs> next ist. year will be the is to is. I want to ask Chris Watkins this later. Uh, Being Chris is all oh, yeah. lawyers like this all all music. No, stuff. he's gonna say um, he famously has said on the air, "I'm not really a music guy." <laughs> Nobody told me a guy that he liked, and I never heard of him. And then I listen, I go, oh, "That's pretty good." Oh, that is true. Wait, Chris uh, Watkins? Yeah, that? yeah, he did have like a a guy. Yeah, yeah. What is the guy's name? Gosh darn it! I actually saw it. I say the other day, it was probably like three weeks ago. Um, it was in like one of my YouTube feeds because that's the one I looked him up a while back. And I go, who? Oh, that's the guy Chris Watkins like. I go, yeah. Let me listen to that song again. Don't remember though. Um, I'll have to. We'll have to ask. Yeah, him. that's fine. Here's something I don't really know what to do with. Um, Beyonce to this. You always have to be careful when you talk about Beyonce. You say anything about Beyonce, it's like all of a sudden 17 million people are just like staring at you. Like, yeah, what? I like that's one. That is one world on social media i will 100 percent not go anywhere near is the uh is the bay hive nope not doing it not that i have anything negative to say but beyonce is kind of like to this point been my uh <clears throat> i it, there's some superstars that are like the rolling stones to me where like 
I don't really know much of what they do, but I have like an album's worth of songs that I could put together where it's a, like a lot of really good stuff. And I don't know what to do with this because uh, I listened to her new album uh, last week, the kind of countryish one they're talking mm-hmm. about. That's that is a gorgeous album. I mean, honest to God, that is a gorgeous album to listen to. And when I say gorgeous, I mean the production value, the harmonies, the songs themselves, obviously. And I don't know that I classify it. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, a, it's like an, I don't know how, I, I wouldn't call it a country album. I would say it's a. I thought it was. So it, what is a country album? Yeah, exactly. I don't. Because like now what country music is, if you go back 30, 40 years. Yeah. What's they're not the same. No, no, you're right. It, it's it'd be interesting to have Pat and Tom or you know, one of them in on this or Cody because, like, you know, my first off, like my dad's generation is like all oh, this other countries. Yeah, give me Merle Haggard, give me Way music. Yeah. Right. And then I first became, I first got into country fringes. I should say I've never really been a full country guy. With, uh, you know, in the 90s, Tim McGraw, Garth Brooks, you know, which was like kind of, that was really kind of like pop country crossover, I would say. Like Tim McGraw's, well, not his debut album. Nobody knows, nobody's ever heard of his debut album. But the, the Not a Moment Too Soon with Don't Take the Girl and uh, Indian Outlaw, which meh, <laughs> doesn't really hold up. And uh, that That is a phenomenal album cover to cover. I, I've worn that album out. CD, tape, cassette, mm-hmm. eight track, whatever you want to call it. Do kids even real like understand wearing something out now? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's, I, you're right. No, kids don't. <laughs> we should actually have the. Um, we should have that as a segment. Like things kids today don't understand. Like yeah. no one. Like if I took out a cassette tape, and I held it in my left hand, and in my right hand I held a pencil. Mm-hmm. Anyone <laughs> thirty five or over knows exactly what that is. But I honestly think under 35, like, I have no idea. Yeah. Have you seen like the kids tried to work a rotary phone? <laughs> I have. I, there's a whole thing of that where they have them doing different things. And then also the one I love is when the kids are listening to like, uh, like Guns N' Roses. Those are fam- phenomenal too. You used to play a cassette tape in a cassette player. And every once in a while, the tape would get tangled up. And you'd have to take a, 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 a pencil or a pen and manually. Yeah, like, why did that happen? I don't know. It was really stupid. Because it would be random. It, it would didn't be a, happen all the time. Totally random. random. You'd, be, you'd be listening like, uh, you know, don't take the... Yeah. And, and then ah. sometimes it's like, oh my gosh. And it's sheer just, panic. Yeah. <laughs> panic. Total spaghetti, too. Like just, sometimes it's like one little loop. You're yes, like, okay, I can fix that easy. No problem. You're like, wait, how... Ah. You know, just, <laughs> and the, the worst ones were the ones where... You finally get to the end of it, and you and it's like caught on something, right. and you're free. It's it's almost like diffusing a bomb, yeah. Because you're like, ah, I need to get it out of there, but if it snaps, right, end of tape, I, end of tape, I'm done. Kids today will never understand the fear and joy of pulling out a video game cartridge and blowing in it, and then very carefully setting it back in and turning the console back on magic and then yeah and then if you got like the load screen like, oh my god yeah i did it same thing with like playstation too even that with the cds like oh. with the nintendo cartridge everyone had their own system everyone did and it just worked on their own nintendo like if a friend tried to do it you're like no no no, 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 no you're no. doing it wrong get out of here i got, got this you have to tap it twice and then blow what um and then I'll just, but I read an article not that long ago. There was a whole story on that. I was like, yeah, uh, blowing on the cartridges did absolutely nothing. Oh, they are it. liars. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. Facts like, say that's not true. It's like, no, uh, no, 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 no. It, it was just turning the thing off and on. The blowing on the cartridge was just uh, that was a placebo. Who started that first? Who's the first person to blow on the cartridge? Yeah, it had to be because some, it got around fast. It, it had to be. It had to be someone with an Atari. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It had yeah. to be somebody with an Atari. Anyways, MC is already on. I, honest to God, I'm like, I, I, I hate to do this. I'm like 20 seconds away from just banning MC straight up. Like, I, I, MC do? I every morning, it's like, God, dude. He's rolling in with like his little code phrases with dollar signs on some conspiracy 
uh, civilians love words of conflict. It's like, bro, does everything have to be like a message? And I'm not going to lie. Part of me, this is the, this is the a-hole part of me. Like part of me for some reason, likes the idea of just limiting his speech just because he's a big free speech guy just to do it, just to be a D bag. But like, is there any chance MC just, just can we, what about this? Can, can we just come up with a compromise, please? Like, what if we have like MC conspiracy day where like, and I use that loosely, where like every Friday you pick the day it could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every, once, once a week, everything you can talk about chemtrails or our corporate overlords or, um, you know, what, whatever, whatever is on your mind, man, you, you have carte blanche but then the other four days it's just like go kings or hey that's an interesting thing or th like thumbs up which I, I love that he does mm -hmm. not trying to limit your speech although i'm absolutely trying to limit your speech that's an interesting point i don't agree but i enjoyed that you made it that, yes yes everything doesn't have to be like oh your know, eyes did you see the bridge fall what, what who's behind it like it, it, it just it's exhausting and then everyone else goes off on the thing it's like come on it's like doing a play it's like doing a play in New York on Broadway, not that we're that talented. And then, like, there's this group that has season tickets that shows up to every single one so they can play spades. And you're like, wow, that was a really good you, analogy. You, you're doing your performance, and then it's like, oh, oh, look, oh, Domino. Okay. But it's just every day, man. Like, ugh. yes, I know. I'm trying to appease my corporate overlords because I am bought out and uh, subject to the system and blah, whatever else. Right. I got to say, he's got to have a great weed stash or something. <laughs> I'm just saying. God bless. Uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, uh, the Kings. Is this a must win tonight? No. No? With, that's our rule. That's right. It's not a, you're not going to die if you lose. Kings Pelicans. We'll say that. Well, I'm just... Oh. Oh, my God. That's a jinx. I just... That is... That is a jinx. I take it back. That was a jinx. What I just did. Nothing's gonna happen if you look. That's a, that's we were talking about it yesterday. That's a jinx. Now they really need to win. They really need to win now. Okay. Woo! Suns beat the Blazers. We'll do. Can I call my family. <laughs> well, you're not on the team. Oh, it's them. I was talking about the kid. Oh, I said when I said you're. I wasn't talking to oh. you. I meant like it's the royal you. Can Deere call his family? The Masters begins today, but it is delayed. We'd have it on right now, but I couldn't get the engineers to install a fire stick I bought. So, I don't know. I'll pull it up on this. You bought another gadget? I bought, a, I bought a fire stick for the station my, out of my own money, brought it in, going to use all my subscriptions. Everyone gets to use it so that we can watch. We have the ESPN app, so we can watch day coverage of everything. And obviously, I want it. I mean, I'm being selfish here, but I did the whole thing. All I... All I and I even tried to install it. The only thing that kept me from fully installing it is there's a, a uh, power strip behind the TV and everything is plugged in. And I'm afraid if I pull a plug, uh, like the whole cluster will go down. You yeah. know, just That's all I asked for. Just, could you guys just plug some? Literally, could you just plug something in? Anyways. So the Masters begins today. We'll come back. Leading off is next. Last season, the Sacramento Kings gave us a little bit of everything. A Pacific Division type GM of the year. Coach of the year. Clutch Player of the Year, All-Stars and All-NBA Performers. Plus, we got to light the beam. Here's a steal by Fox, a breakaway. He's got the rip with the left hand. What does this season have in store? Find out. Each and every Sacramento Kings game can be heard right here on your proud home of the beam team, Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. Urgent Camp Lejeune Settlement Message. The government will soon begin providing fast, guaranteed settlements to Camp Lejeune Marines, families, and civilians. Awards will range between $100,000 and $550,000 with an option for higher amounts. If you or a loved one spent time at Camp Lejeune and suffered cancers of the bladder, liver or kidneys, leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Parkinson's, or kidney issues, you may be entitled to a significant financial reward for your Camp Lejeune claim and could be paid within 60 days after accepting your settlement with your VA benefits fully protected. But the deadline for filing is fast approaching, so you need to act now. Call the James Harris Law Camp Lejeune helpline now to get the compensation you deserve. We're already fighting for thousands harmed by the water at Camp Lejeune, and with the deadline coming, you need to call 
call now or you may forever lose your right to a settlement between $100,000 and $550,000. For your free evaluation, call 800-738-2277. 800-738-2277. 800-738-2277. All guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Let's do it. Leading off the three top stories in the morning. Huge news. This is very important. Here's cut number one. New Orleans had won four straight before their loss Friday night to the Clippers, and they've come back just smoking hot. Another quarter three is knocked down. This time it's Najee Marshall. And you hear the Bluebirds in Sacramento. A minute 32 to go in this quarter. The Kings are now trailing by 40. That's four zero points, 99 to 59. And that was, if I remember right, well, that was full strength, right? Oh, I think so, probably. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> needless to say, the New Orleans Pelicans have dominated the Kings this year unlike any other team. They have to say, like, if there was one of those memes where, like, you had Zion and Brandon Ingram and they were like, holding infants and they were the kings yeah like that would like they are the king's daddy full on this year uh it all started out monday november 20th in new orleans where they lost by 36 then the only time it's ever even been close was that follow-up two days later new orleans they lost by five that's okay. respectable so that's a uh that's a 41 point drop uh then they lost by 10 at home so on, on December 4th, so that's a 51-point drop. That was the in-season tournament. That was. And then... To get uh, to Vegas. Yes. And then, as you heard the G-Man uh, right there, uh, they, the Kings did cut it down, but they ended up losing at home by 33. That's 84 points in four games. That is an average of easy math, 21 points per game that the Kings get beaten or have gotten beaten by new orleans their final regular season matchup is tonight at 7 p.m it is a tnt game so once again i believe this is the second time because the end season tournament was on uh, national wow. tv this is a second chance uh for the kings to get on tnt and do something uh at home that starts at seven and <clears throat> they're I won't say their playoff, their playing lives are on the line, but with the uh, with the Clippers tanking last night to the Suns, thanks a lot, LA, mm. sitting everybody. Um, it, it, it's 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 actually, I think, not saying it's not going to happen, but just the brass tacks here. If you look at the numbers, Jason, there is a very, very, very realistic shot tonight let me see the are the lakers even in action no. and they're not okay there is a very very realistic shot tonight that the kings will be i believe here if i'm doing the math right in a three-way tie for the eight nine ten with the lakers and the warriors the kings are one game up on the warriors a half game up on the lakers the lakers are idle tonight and the Golden State Warriors play somebody lame. Who is it? Uh, Portland or Utah? I think. I think. I, I think you're absolutely right. Where? Where? where am I? Oh, let me look at today here. Uh, they play. Yeah, they're in Portland, and they are favored by 14 and a half. So let's just go ahead and say the Warriors are going to win that ball game. Stranger things have happened. Lakers are are off. So yes, that is the reality for all of y'all. Now, the good news is the Sacramento Kings own the tiebreaker over both the Lakers and the Warriors. Right. So even in a three-way tie, the Kings would prevail and be eight. But with the Suns coming into town, second out of a back-to-back, -back, right? Tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Isn't that? Yeah. Uh, and the Lakers and Warriors also having a couple more. You're, you're going to have the Portland win, you hope, in the bag. But it is a very, very likely scenario that the Sacramento Kings, somewhere around 10 p.m. tonight, as fans are, are getting out of the arena, are going to be confronted with the fact that they have they have blown the lead, if you will, uh, in the standings, and they're sitting in a three-way tie for their, their playing lives. And as much as we look back at all these games, okay. right, whether it's what, pick your game, Detroit, Charlotte, you know, go down the list. Yeah. The fact that you've lost to one team four times, four. And potentially, if tonight goes, as you're suggesting, five, that's a killer. It is a killer. I mean, <laughs> it is a killer. It is. 
But I also don't know what the three-way tiebreaker rules are. I think they're different than the head-to-head. Well, I would imagine, let's say they all three ended up tied. Wouldn't you just go through like, okay, well, does anybody have the tiebreaker? over? Like, Kings have the tiebreaker over both. Okay, and then they're, they're they're above. And then, okay, well, who has the tiebreaker between the It Lakers? might be as simple as that. I, I hope so. I know the Warriors have it on the Lakers. But uh, the Kings have it on on the head to head on the war on the Lakers, but they have to go to that other second tiebreaker to get to the worst. So I don't know. Might be a little bit more convoluted. Maybe not. Maybe it's as simple as that. I hope so. Yeah. Cut number two, please. Cut number two. Who do you want to carry over from tonight to Sacramento? Um, well, just the intensity we play with in the fourth, the simplicity we play with as well. Just keep building, man. Keep building. I know it's been a couple games away and the playoffs, so we're just gonna stay healthy, keep grinding, man. You talking about that, that defense? All right. Well, thanks a lot, Clippers. Mm-hmm. They just decided, hey, let's sit every single person ever. Yeah. Uh, so the Suns go into LA and a, a rather, I mean, at first, you know, they were down at the half, but yeah. then it was let's get serious time. They outscore the Clippers 62 to uh, 47 uh, in the second half. Nope, they did because that's Cleveland and Memphis, Jason. Yeah. Uh, they outscore the Clippers 69. Hey, now to uh, 52 in the second half. But see, that's what you can do if you're the Clippers. You've already kind of done your work early enough. You can set your terms. And yeah, Kings fans can go, oh, thanks, LA. But this is on the Kings. I agree with you. Yeah. Because the Kings can be doing that. Right. The Kings could be doing that if. Which they they did last year. You know, did the thing. At the end. Uh, Yep. So, a little nervous. Yeah. A little nervous. Understandably, They're very, very high strong. Got to stay out of the 910, but that's still very much in play. Very. I, I honestly wonder. I, there's got to be somewhere. Somebody's got to have laid odds on this, mm-hmm. right? Somebody's got to have an odds tracker for where. I, I'd be a little surprised if the odds weren't the Kings at nine. I think that's where the odds would yeah. be. be Kings. Not 10, but I think. But everything's in play. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't. I don't think six is in play. It has to be the lowest odds, right? They have to win out. New yeah. Orleans has to lose out. Uh, have to get even a little more help, too, from Phoenix. Phoenix. So, yeah. I, yeah. I, That's going to be the most difficult one. Yeah. Yeah. I would say eight or nine is probably the highest odds. Maybe even nine. I think, I think yeah, I think nine is the highest. Eight is the second highest. Ten might be the third. Ten Six might, has got to be Yeah, the yeah. Six has got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or seven, right? Did we already say oh seven? yeah, we did. Yeah, say seven. seven. Yeah, I think it might go seven. And then I don't. Know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Master starts today, but uh, is a little bit delayed because of weather. When we come back, we'll uh, let's get back into standing to watch, which we kind of just did right there. But we'll we'll go through there. And yeah, the Kings lose tonight. Uh oh, spaghetti. Uh, yeah, we'll be right back after this. Keep it here to Sacktown Sports for the Sacramento Kings push toward the postseason. Get analysis from our local shows, breakdowns from our Kings insiders, and all the thrilling moments from the G-Man. Fox now on the left angle, gets to two-point range, lobs it out to Herter, wide open. Three to seal the deal. He's got the triple, and Fox has a career high, 16th assist. Sacktown Sports is your proud home of the Sacramento Kings. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda. The PGA Club fitters at the Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio know that golf should be fun. They also know that players of all abilities will hit the ball farther and straighter, play better golf, shoot lower scores, and have more fun if they get fitted before they purchase golf clubs. Hagen Oaks delivers the same technology and major brands used to fit PGA and LPGA professionals. See how the game can be even more fun. Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio fittings are available seven days a week. Make yours today by calling 916-808-2531. That's 808-2531. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. 
How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. I love this time of year when the azaleas begin to bloom and the singing birds' sweet dawn chorus remind us that blue skies and sunshine are at hand. Hi, this is Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. In sports, the definition for the word master is one who's achieved a high degree of skill, and that will be on display in the highly anticipated golf tournament. In the furniture business, a master is a highly skilled craftsman, an artist even, whose work is coveted by those who appreciate design, quality, and durability. John Keyes was the mastermind of Naturewood Home Furnishings. He knew that you wanted your home to reflect your personal style, whether that was a plain coffee table or a masterpiece for you to enjoy forever. That's why when you walk into Naturewood Home Furnishings, you'll find the largest and best selection of the highest quality home furnishings in Northern California. Masterful. Naturewood Home Furnishings, off Highway 50 at Hazel. Look for the water wheel. What's up? We're talking to Chad Hoblet of Hoblet Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Woodland. Chad, what's going on for Ram Truck Month? We are very excited to be celebrating 75 years in business by doing what we do best, helping you get the truck you need for less. Right now, save up to 11000 off MSRP on new 2024 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs. And with over 500 new Rams available, you won't find a better selection in all of California. Wow, 75 years? That is amazing. It all started with my grandpa and great-grandpa's dream, and it's grown over the years to where we've had a chance to serve tens of thousands of customers and show them there's something special about Hoblet you just can't get at those big city auto mall dealerships. Come experience the difference at California's number one Ram truck dealer. Search, select, and save through their whole inventory at HobletDodge.com. Unbeatable prices, unbeatable selection. Nobody beats Hoblet, period. 11,000 total net savings after 5,000 factory rebates and 6,000 dealer discounts. Rebates include 2,000 Chrysler Capital bonus cash must finance through Chrysler Capital Qualify. 500 first responder bonus cash must be current member of eligible first responder association. More than five of this total net savings. See dealer for details. The Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross. Call or text at 916 339 1140 on Sacktown Sports. What's a never good hope to win? I was like, when it comes back from break, and I'm trying to hork down a bite of Nutri Bar, and the first clip is like zoomed right in on me. It's gotta be good. Why, why, why did I make that sound? I don't know. You said a hork. Or, yeah, that's true. It was like an oink. Um, mm, gross. A couple of things um, before you get standings watch. Jason, I gotta, you know, don't want to yuck your yum, as I always say, but I try not to. I gotta tell you, something you said during the break just kind of triggered me. What in like my top five things of things that a lot of people like that I hate are spaghettios. I hate spaghettios. You do? Oh my god, my mom tried to give me spaghetti. Pe- people really like spaghetti. He likes spaghettios, huh? A lot of people do. Really? Well, I did. I can't remember the last time I had oh, them. Oh god. But I love them as a kid. Old head- they somehow taste cold when they're hot. Dude, it's so funny. Yes. And and I don't know. Like, the sauce is so sweet. Bless you. That's it, why I like it. It tastes like old heads will remember this. The old Chuck E. Cheese pizza sauce. It used to taste like ketchup. It's like they put little circle pastas in with, like, ketchup and mix it together. And they're SpaghettiOs. And you might get meatballs or hot dogs. The funny thing is, though, is I like uh, I like the Chef Boyardee, the beef ravioli. I like those. Same idea. I think it's the same sauce. I, it might be, but maybe like I don't know. Maybe the re- the beef. Maybe the and, meat. Yeah, like offsets it. Also, I don't know if anyone else has this friend. You know, the other couple we always hang out with. So every morning around this time, which you can take a guess as what he's doing, 
uh, we get I, we have a group text. Uh, um, Chris almost spit take, and he sends a meme every day. We probably get an average of three and a half memes from this guy, and no one responds. Usually, it's his wife with a like. She'll hit do the thing where she holds her finger down on the meme and hits ha ha just because I think she'll get yelled at. Like, hey, because I'm pretty sure he goes like, hey, did you, uh, hey, did, did you see that meme I sent earlier? Like, it, it, you didn't, it, you didn't react to it. Is it. Did you not think it was funny? Like one of the right, like he still goes to fark.com, F-A-R-K, like one of those people. So every day he sends his memes and I'm afraid, like one out of every 300 memes he sends, like if I find something that is knockout, dragged down, I think make, like makes me laugh out loud. I'll put it in there. The problem is, is that if anyone does that, he instantly it's like, ha ha, and throws it's like on. 50 memes back at you. And they're very like, the problem is, and I would never tell them this, but 98% of them are not. It's like, okay, I mean, I guess. See, if you, I'm going to show you three memes, Jason. I'm going to okay. see if you can guess the one that I sent. Okay. Um, here's number one. Okay. Okay. Here's number two. Okay. Here's here's number three. Okay, those are the last three memes that were sent. Okay. Number one, number two, or number three. Which one was mine? I would like to submit number three. Uh, you are hundred percent correct. You are one hundred percent correct. Where did you get the I, memes from? I, dude, I, I think somebody like I don't look for memes, but like I'll memes be just happen. They, they do, but I I haven't seen them like that. Like I'll be on social media, you know, I'll be on Twitter, and then if I see somebody like if it's something like that that just kills me, I'll save it because I know I can use that as a reply to a lot of people. But I, I don't know if that does everybody. I'm glad I haven't received that one yet. No, I, I at some point I'll probably <laughs> use it in our group yes. text. But I don't know. Does I I feel like everybody has meme friend. Yeah, and you kind yes. of like you're obligated to be like, yeah, it was, I mean, that was, was great. I like to send memes, but I don't feel like I need a response. No. And I'll bet you that you. It's like, usually a response to the. I don't just randomly send a meme. I don't think. I, it's Jason's usually, a big GIF guy. A GIF. Yeah. That's more of a GIF. Like, but it's off of the comment maybe you said. And so I'm like, right. Okay, it's a, this it's, is my response. Yes. Via, it's an appropriate yeah. meme that fits the conversation. It doesn't need a ha ha. Or no. if it gets one, that's fine. If not, I'm like, I responded. Oh, I got in a lot of trouble because I was told that in the group chat, I don't like there. or ha-ha. Here, look at the very bottom. There's the wife LOLing <laughs> live. She, she just did it live. That's good. She did it live. Go but ahead, Chris. Sorry. I was told that I don't do that, uh -huh. so I'm not participating in the group. I'm just like, I talk in the group chat. Like, right. Yeah, but you're not liking or laughing at like i'm just like are you being serious wait somebody actually said how many people are in this chat this is a big one this is like 10 oh but it's, so it's like one of those ones like i'll be at work and then i'll look at my phone and it's just like 13 and i'm like what i'm not gonna go through all of this and it's like one comment with everybody liking everybody was yes. right and then now do you i assume you mute the the, the oh yeah yet? yeah it's been muted i can't i can't i'm in one text thread that is over four people and that's the one with like all of the cousins, all my cousins and stuff. But I mute, I don't ever look at it. And if I see like a ton of notifications, I'll look because it will show you the banner. And if it's not like happy birthday or something, I just hit delete until it pops. I don't even look. Wow. I don't understand large, the, 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 I don't understand the poll for large group texts. They drive me absolutely insane. If family won the lottery. Please submit yes, you're interested. Yeah. If I see and that, you said no. If I see that in the banner, I'm, I'm hitting heart or whatever. Yeah, that'll do. But he's absolutely right. Oh, hey, Jimmy had a birthday today. Like, heart, ha, ha, like, exclamation points. Bing, 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 bong. Anyways, from the 916, Dave, add me to the group text. I am the meme lord. No, that instantly, if I was going to add you That's to the group punishment. text, you just, yeah, you yeah. just screwed yeah, yourself CT. out of it. Don't want, I think there, there should be like, um, like a rehab clinic for meme people <laughs> that like all gather and like just need to share their memes with each other. And I think there's a whole etiquette thing with it. I think I'm pretty good, but I'm like one every other day. You talk about on ours or just in general, just in general. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like I've said it before. Our show group text is probably my favorite group text because there's a high bar 
there is no unnecessary sending. And if there is, that person would probably get dragged pretty hard. Like Chris will send something. It's funny. I'll send some. I hope it's funny. Jason, or it's show related. Like or it's show related. Uh, you know, something. Yeah, Chris, info news, right? Like that. Chris isn't just randomly going like, "Here's my picture of the eclipse." And yeah. man. anyways, oh, I'm sorry, I sent that. <laughs> the eclipse pictures, by the way, that was a whole different thing. That whole, that whole, that whole eclipse experience, honestly, it hurt my faith in humanity just a little bit, just a little, little bit. But you know, is what it is. Hey, if you, if it's, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. Great philosopher said yeah, that once. You saw. Uh, I would be very happy if the Kings were able to win tonight. Uh, gentlemen, let's get this out of the way early just for funsies. Brandon Ingram is out. The uh, New Orleans Pelicans have beaten the Kings in four games by a combined 84 points. So tonight, Golden 1 center. Hornets. Hornets are uh, not playing, but they're in front of me right now. Pelicans, Kings, TNT, 7 p.m. right here on Sackdown Sports. It's the only place you can get a local broadcast. Who is favored? And by how much? Um, I'm confused on this one. I'm going to say Pelicans by a point and a half. Hmm. I'm going to say Pelicans by two and a half. Okay. One and a half is exactly on the nose. Jason Ross. The other way around? Yep. The Kings are favored by one and a half tonight. I don't like that. I don't like like that call. Thanks, Vegas. Jinxing, right? (sighs) Yes, but they don't care. They okay. they do not care. Once again, if the Kings lose tonight, uh, it is a uh, oh, spaghetti, as we said earlier, to start the whole conversation. If the Kings lose tonight, we're just going to go ahead and assume the Warriors are going to win in Portland. Uh, the Lakers are idle. I believe the Suns are idle, too, by the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, if that were the case, it would look like the following. Uh, the Kings would be eliminated from the sixth seed. Uh, the Pelicans Correct. would then have a three-game lead with two left and the tiebreaker. Uh, the Kings would then be a full two games uh, behind the Pelicans, which means the Suns, the Suns, I apologize, with two, to go. with two to go, which means the Kings would have to win both of their games, including the one against Phoenix yep. on the second night of a back-to-back. Phoenix would have to lose. Now, listen, they play in Sacramento and in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Not, not, not for nothing, nothing there. You know, that, that. That's not an that is not an impossibility by any stretch of the imagination. And let's see. Yeah, the Timberwolves are currently uh tied with the Thunder, a game back of the Nuggets. So odds oh, wow. are, you know what can happen uh, now that you say that? Uh, there I don't know what would happen here. There is a chance. Let's do this little exercise. Suns lose both. Yeah. Kings we're saying lose tonight. Yeah. Win both. Yeah. So they're tied with Phoenix. Lakers win both. Yeah. Oh God. Warriors win all three. Yes, you're right. There is a four way tie at four forty seven wins. It'll be a four way tie for seventh place or for setting the seventh seed at forty seven. Woof. Is that right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. None of them play. Well, the only one that plays each other is the Kings and Suns. Kings and Suns, and the Kings would have to win that one. Right. Kings would have to obviously win out. Suns lose out. That puts the Kings at 47. The Lakers would have to win their last two. That puts them at 47. Warriors would have to win their last three, including Portland tonight. That puts them at 47. I mean, part of me, I'm not rooting for that, but oh my God. Yeah, how about that scenario? And odds are when Minnesota plays the Suns, they're, they're going to be playing for a seed. Yeah. They're going to be playing for a position. Right. So that'll be very interesting, too. We'll take a break. When we come back, safe or out, there may be a very interesting storyline developing when it comes to the Sacramento athletics of next year. And it has nothing to do with the Sacramento athletics It has everything to do with hockey. What? What What does that even mean? What does that mean? I don't know. We'll find out next. Sacktown sports. Did you miss any part of our live local shows? Don't worry. You never have to miss them again. Check out sacktownsports.com and search our podcast page and play our shows when you want. The Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and The Drive Guys. Plus, other podcasts like Return of the Empire, Return of the Roar, The Stingers Up Podcast, and Golf to Go with Frank LaRosa. They're all available right now on sacktownsports.com. Dirty Heads, live in concert, Friday, April 12th, 7.30 p.m., the venue at Thunder Valley. 
up with special guests, the elevators. On sale at ThunderValleyResort.com. Don't miss Dirty Heads Live. Rescue me. At Ashton & Price, over the last 25 years, we've won just about every injury case you can think of. Slip and fall, falling merchandise, fell through rotted decking, we won those. Dangerous stairs, falls into holes, dog bites, won them. Injured while pedestrian or on a bicycle, auto, motorcycle, big rig, company vehicle, Uber, or Lyft accident, we've won them all. And the best news is there's no fee until you win. So no matter how you got injured, remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. Fraudulent tax returns due identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. They're U.S.-based restoration specialists are dedicated to helping solve identity theft issues, and all plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package, which means if you lose money because of identity theft, LifeLock will reimburse you up to the limits of your plan. Help protect your information with LifeLock. Go to LifeLock.com and save up to 25% your first year with my name, Clay, as your promo code. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by granger for the ones who get it done Ooh, ma. what was that that is business phone bliss with the uma cloud phone system it handles all our voice video and messaging needs you sound very calm i am uma has everything i need to run my business more efficiently like virtual receptionist call routing and video conferencing and it starts at just 1995 per month per user plus taxes and fees uma nice find your business com at uma.com slash radio if your medical is ending cover california is here to help cover california is a service from the state that helps you get affordable health insurance in many cases at no cost to you just like with medical we have quality health plans and we'll help you every step of the way to get the one that works for you and your family. So if you're no longer eligible for Medi-Cal, check out Cover California. We'll keep you covered. Learn more at CoveredCA.com. Rivercats fans, we are celebrating 25 seasons of baseball at Sutter Health Park. Join us on Friday, April 12th for our first giveaway of the season. The first 2,500 fans receive a Kyle Harrison Rivercats t-shirt jersey. On Saturday, April 13th, we welcome Sacramento Kings legend Chris Weber to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Weber will also be available pregame for a book signing and meet and greet. To view the complete 2024 schedule and to purchase tickets, visit rivercats.com. Safe. Or out. It's time to go around baseball. Three pitches, three swings. It's safe or out on the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, let's do it. Safe or out time. Chris Rillard. Question one. Safe or out. With the NHL's Coyotes set to move to Salt Lake next year, that may have closed off another path for John Fisher. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, just looking ahead. If Vegas falls through, the thought is that it would most likely, if Fisher decided to uh, either move or sell, if he decided to sell, it would become a bidding war between Sacramento, Oakland, and Salt Lake. If it was a, I'm keeping the team, but I'm still going to move. Oakland probably moves way down to third because they don't deal with each other very well. And then it would seem to be Sacramento or Salt Lake. And I'm not ruling out any other cities, but assuming that it's going to be a West Coast thing. I guess Portland would be like, hey, we're Portland. Yeah. Uh, but this might eliminate Salt Lake City. The the appetite there when you have a city that has... Doesn't know, hockey make more sense there anyway? I think it does. I think, I think it, yes, I think it does. Um... You know, obviously they support the Jazz, but they're they are a small market. The idea that they would instantly just it, this is in Vegas, you know, adding in the NHL and then Major League Baseball all at once, uh, it does not seem that there is the appetite even in Salt Lake City for that. Now, with the NHL, what we mean here is 
there's a contingency plan released by the NHL yesterday, or reported on, I should say, where the Arizona Coyotes would actually play in Utah as soon as next season. Their their situation in Phoenix is, I mean, it, it, I wouldn't say it's A is bad, but the fact that they're playing at a college where I think it's like, is it like 1,500 people, 3,000 people? for It's a tiny, tiny place, and they can't get any uh, – they can't get any support for that whatsoever. Um, they're, 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 they thought they had a solution with a with a two point one billion dollar entertainment district in Tempe, but voters soundly rejected that. And there's another thing that's kind of happening right now where there is some buzz, and it's been reported on that Major League Baseball owners are starting to get a little more than annoyed at this situation. And oh, now? Now. Oh, and, and, their, and their motivations are, of course, perfect because they feel like John Fisher might be screwing it up for other cities that w- might want public subsidies for their stadiums. Oh. That 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 John Fisher is murky, mur- murky, mur- uh, what is it when you make the water? Murky. Muddying, muddying the waters, thank you. Muddying the waters for everyone else that might, that might, they're going to point at this situation and say, see, these, these places don't care about their, yeah. their, their team, their mercenaries, blah, blah, blah. Like the annoyance level with other baseball owners is really starting to grow with John Fish. I could not be happier about that. Yeah. And the one thing that uh, when you brought up the A's and, you know, uh, if Salt Lake does become a non factor, that's different than the Sacramento situation with the Kings years mm-hmm. ago was we all felt back then is like if the Kings left, like we weren't getting it. That's exactly right. Where it there's a chance for Oakland. I don't know how good of a chance, but there's a chance. Yeah. Which I'm glad is at least being even mentioned. But, you know, first off, let's see if there's a miracle that they can stay. But I would think it, that's what it would take. Well, the now. big thing with Sacramento was finding the owner. Correct. And it sounds like Oakland has that in spades. Maybe well, multiple. Yeah. Some stuff that Casey said, look, there's people that I can't even mention that would be interested. Casey Pratt came on the show and, and, and last week and said it, or earlier this week, and uh, has reported on it that Joe Lacob's the one everybody knows about, but he said there's more than one. So that's the idea. And for Oakland fan, like, there's a path. That's why I see, I understand that they're heartbroken about the, the, the A's leaving next year because that's going to happen. The A's are going to play in Sacramento. That You can't stop that. But if, if it, you know they need like uh, Milbray John or something, and, and they're, they're uh, crowned downtown of the A's to be like, guys, there is a plan. Okay, they're holding in Sacramento. That's fine. They're still down the road. Salt Lake's probably out. Now we need to work on this ballot initiative in, in Vegas and and kill that yeah. off. You, you, as we said before, you cut off every path until Fisher, like the Maloofs. Throws up his hands and says, fine, score or is pressured to yeah. do that. And now all of a sudden, if you're in a bidding war, you're not beating Joe Lacob. You're right. just not doing it. And then if you have that now, while supposedly Vegas was going to be built for three or four years, yes. so if you're starting to build in Oakland, then yeah, they just play here for a couple of years and then move back. I will say this right now, and then we'll go to number two. I think the chances of the A, this, this sounds so insane. Mark it down April 11th. I think the chances for the A's to stay in Oakland are probably better than they've been over the last two years. But not right now, like with no, a break. With a break. Yeah. But I think the chances are actually better than they were a year or two ago because of this movement. Now yeah. now the game is on because yeah. Fisher's come out of his bunker. Now the game's on. You just have to strategize correctly. Number two. Reports say some layoffs actually began yesterday for A's employees. Some who've been there for quite a long time. Safer out. We should acknowledge the human side of this a little more. I don't expect Sacramentans to, you know, or anyone to to cry for the hot dog vendor. I understand that or the, you know, the low level administrator. But I I do think it's important when we we talk about Aaron Judge visiting and all this stuff. It's just a reality that in sports, it's not limited to this, that you've got people there that 10, 20, 30 years have had this job. This is a big deal. Some of them, it's their main income. Some of them, it's they're, they're older, maybe retired, and they work on the weekends, taking tickets, greeting people, all that. They're, they're saying goodbye. I feel a lot more sorry for them than I do for the millionaire athletes that they'll be fine. Yeah, sorry you're playing in a AAA stadium and you're 
you know, catering is going to be coming they're from not this. Their they're not losing their yeah. jobs. And they, even if they did lose their jobs, they're far better. You know, it's not like it's cheap to live in the Bay Area either. For a lot of people, again, this is a secondary income that's that's that they need. And I, I do think that there needs to be a face uh, or faces put on that as well. Real good people, real people yeah. are losing real jobs. Yeah, that's safe. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, those stories aren't covered enough. But if they do get covered, they need to be acknowledged for sure. Number three, please. An ESPN article said A's President Dave Cavill wouldn't comment on increasing salaries when they go to Vegas. Uh, sorry, when they cut that's I wrote that wrong. Wouldn't comment on increasing salaries when they come to Sacramento. Sacramento. My apologies. Safer out. That's because they won't. That's safe. Uh, just, just important to understand that. I know we're out of time. They're not. If there's no they, track record. There's no track record, and there's no income. They're they're losing income coming here, and they're spending money. There's a better chance. That payroll falling from where it is right now. That increase. Ugh. We'll take a break. When we come back, the Masters begins, and a very uncomfortable guest shows up at Augusta. We'll preview that. We got a question for you about it next. The only place you'll find Keegan Murray is Sacktown Sports. Out to Keegan Murray, straight away for three, and Keegan knocks down the triple. Hey, Sacramento, it's Keegan Murray, and you're listening to the home of Sacramento Kings, Sacktown Sports. Your local sports leader. Shop our best savings for spring during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off, plus save an extra $150 on every $1,500 you spend on select major appliances. And save on premium two-cubic foot mulch. Get five bags for just $10. Because Lowe's knows spring. Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid to 417. Appliance savings vary based on purchase amount. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for more details. Premium mulch offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii. Selection varies by location. While supplies last ebay motors is here for the ride go ahead feel your engine admire that perfectly installed exhaust your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love with ebay motors you get over 122 million parts to keep it running and with ebay guaranteed fit they'll be the perfect fit every time plus at these prices well we're burning rubber not cash keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply Spring savings continue at Folsom Lake Kia. Low payments, special offers, zero down deals on approval of credit. Shop your trusted Kia dealership for over 25 years and tell them DC sent you. FolsomLakeKia.com. Hi, everyone. It's Emron Pilati, host of the True Sports Card Show here on Sacktown Sports 1140 every Saturday at 10 a.m. Would you like a chance to meet Ricky Henderson, Dennis Rodman, Johnny Manziel, Randy Johnson, Frank Thomas, Vlad Guerrero Sr., Dave Stewart, and our favorite Malik Monk and meet over 90 sports card dealers all in one weekend? This is your chance to do it on May 17th through the 19th at the Roseville Fairgrounds at the Sacramento Autograph Expo. You can get all the information about the show on our website at sacautographexpo.com. That's Sac autographexpo.com Hey, it's Carmichael Dave inviting you to make the switch to electric this spring and save big with American Energy. Stay ahead of the spiking energy bills this summer with up to nine grand in rebates on a new ultra high efficiency comfort system. American Energy is providing huge rebates from SMUD as well as spring specials by installing one of many incredibly efficient AC options available to you right now. Get rid of those fluctuating gas bills in the winter and switch to year-round all-electric with American Energy. Let them perform a free in-home energy efficiency analysis and see where they can help you save for the warmer months ahead. These guys are the best. Been serving the greater Sacramento area since 1981. A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Learn more by calling 916-520-9990. That's 916-520-9990. 
When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda. I love this time of year when the azaleas begin to bloom and the singing birds sweet dawn chorus remind us that blue skies and sunshine are at hand. Hi, this is Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. In sports, the definition for the word master is one who's achieved a high degree of skill and that will be on display in the highly anticipated golf tournament. In the furniture business, a master is a highly skilled craftsman, an artist even, whose work is coveted by those who appreciate design, quality, and durability. John Keyes was the mastermind of Naturewood Home Furnishings. He knew that you wanted your home to reflect your personal style, whether that was a plain coffee table or a masterpiece for you to enjoy forever. That's why when you walk into Naturewood Home Furnishings, you'll find the largest and best selection of the highest quality home furnishings in Northern California. Masterful. Naturewood Home Furnishings, off Highway 50 at Hazel, Look for the water wheel. Welcome to the Tap House Restaurant at Bartley Cavanaugh Golf Course. With an array of local craft brews from a selection of 20 taps, the Tap House menu boasts freshly made sandwiches, crisp salads, and a variety of specialty entrees. The Tap House is the perfect place for a round after your round at Bartley Cavanaugh Golf Course, especially during happy hour from 3 to 6 daily. Drop by the Tap House restaurant for scenic views, exquisite food, and a hearty welcome. The Tap House at Bartley Cavanaugh Golf Course. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Tough Shed, new dog treatment centers, and Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. All guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Take it on the local level. Live and local, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios. Sacktown Sports. I'm Chris Verlod with your Masters update. The first round of the 88th Masters has been delayed more than two hours due to bad weather in Augusta this morning. First group was due to tee off at 5 a.m. in the Pacific. This, the first group will now tee off at 10.30, 7.30 a.m. our time in about 30 minutes. Tiger Woods will tee off later in the afternoon at 1.54 Pacific time. This update is brought to you by Naturewood Home Furnishing, where it's all about choices and always about quality. The Carmichael Dave Show. He's on the microphone when he's not on the microphone. He's playing a song, and when he's not playing a song, he's on the microphone, and then boom! With Jason Ross. No! He did it! Yes! He did! Call or text at 916-339-1140. It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross on Sacktown Sports. All right, hour number two. I'm looking for uh, I'm wrong here. I'm looking for coverage of the Masters on the ESPN app, and the first one's at eight fifteen. I, mean, I know they yeah, it's pushed back, right? I'm like, yeah, I just there should be some live at the Masters crap or whatever. I guess it is up here on that golf channel, wherever it is. Masters starts today. If you're not a golf person, relax. Uh, Greg Norman was at Augusta yesterday. Is that right? Yeah, he was not expected to show up. Uh, the background on that is Greg Norman is the uh, linchpin, if you will, for the uh, the Live Golf Tour. Um, he's the one that he's the commissioner, the guy in charge over there. Well, the guy, the guy in charge uh, on the face. Um, so it's obviously awkward. Like a lot of people blame him for dividing uh, the two, and it's like this weird golf underbelly. There's like something with it, it. I don't even know what it is, but it's like the live tour people 
Teslas and crypto. Like there's like this Venn diagram <laughs> with them that I don't quite understand, but it's strange. And, and there's like this rivalry between the two. Now Norman shows up and apparently for a while he was following Rory McElroy around watching him play on his practice round. And Rory's been a staunch yeah. uh, supporter and advocate for the PGA tour and very outspoken against uh, Greg Norman and the uh, little live tour. So stay tuned for that. Uh, with the, with it beginning today, you know, I'm a honk for the whole thing. I watched the par three yesterday. It's just golfers bringing out their families. Tony Finau is 30, 30 person family. He brought out, <laughs> he's, he's such a good family man, a dad. He had, I think he had five kids to be honest and his wife with him. And, uh, you know, you have like a John Rom's, you know, little one who tried, literally tried to eat the microphone last year. So you, you see these golfers kind of in their element personally and all the kids and, and wives and girlfriends are in these uh white masters uh, uh caddy outfits you know and the little kids with the the backwards masters hats rolling around in the bunkers and stuff it's it's a cool thing that they do over on the par three um and nobody who has ever won the par three contest has ever won yep the masters did uh, <clears throat> i didn't watch the end did, uh, do you know i don't even know who won the part i think ricky fowler uh -oh. uh well he was at he was at five under and leading uh who won the par three i uh, he he was he was leading at five under um yeah he won and uh, victor hovland had an ace oh we'll have to get the norwegian call on that <laughs> yes one. they love them some victor hovland yeah exactly so um you know I, we, we, we talked about this yesterday, Jason, but honestly, I just want to explore it. Cause I, I, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced in my answer, but here's where I'm starting right now. I believe that winning the masters is the greatest individual performance uh, uh, award in sports. And uh, what I've decided to put it up against so far is like, okay, what about a gold medal? Mm -hmm. Okay. First off, I mean, I'm adding everything in. So first off, the Masters is worth, I think, a couple million dollars. Plus, you get the green jacket. Plus, you get you're a member for life at Augusta. You get your own locker and just the prestige and all that that goes with it. Now, gold medal, I think if you had, like, all these categories as to how to rank them, there's places where the gold medal is, is better than the Masters internationally, prestige, whatever you want to say. But I think overall, I would take a – if I had a choice between winning a gold medal or winning the green jacket, I'm going to take the green jacket. Heisman Trophy. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thing is, you win the Heisman Trophy. In, in fact, more often than not, you're going to be an average or not very good NFL yeah, it's player. nothing for the NFL. You are definitely – it is kind of – it is – in the category of like exclusivity and prestige, it's right there with the green jacket. You are one of a small list of people. It's only once a year. You are forever what in, in your obituary. And you can live in the Heisman house. You, yes, yes, on, on, on the commercials. Yes. Uh, you will forever, when you die, one of the first lines in your obituary, if not the first words, will say Heisman Trophy winner Jason Ross. You know, that, that, there's that. Now, am I, what am I, meant? is there a greater, in your opinion, is there anything that comes to mind that maybe I'm forgetting that overall to you would be a better individual award in sports? Well, I think when you add in all the things that comes with the Masters, like you said, the membership, yeah, um, you know, for something like I don't care about the green jacket, but they might. That's also part of the acknowledgement. You get the dinner the next year. Yes. I mean, there's a couple you little. You get to go to every other dinner in the yeah. future for the champions. And all the other majors you get to play in, yeah. right? So. Um, for the sport and for what it means, I mean, I, I I don't know of an individual like MVPs. All those things are great, but I don't know that gold medal would be the next closest one to me, if not the number one. I think so. I think I I, I think you're right. Um, I, I apologize. By the way, uh, the money breakdown: uh, the winner of the tournament uh, gets three point two million dollars. So, hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, but after tax. Um, and I'm trying, I'm trying to see if I can find it. Because like you said, like there's all kinds of, I think you get, you can play in the Masters for life. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that, in fact, I'm positive that's the case. Uh, you get a replica trophy of the clubhouse, honorary lifetime membership. Uh, obviously, you get the ranking points and all that fun stuff. But again, I mean, the green jacket, five-year exemption on the PGA Tour and, uh, and also a five-year exemption to the Open, the U.S. Open, and the PGA Championship. 
Um, every Masters winner can enter the tournament again every single year, and every member automatically becomes, or every winner automatically becomes uh, a, a, a member, uh, an honorary member. It says this isn't the same as being a fully paid up Augusta national member. Oh. Only Jack and Arnie went on to enjoy that privilege. It does mean, however, they get to play Augusta national whenever they like and wear their green jacket whenever they're on the premises. I mean, what's the difference? Yeah. My goodness gracious. So I, 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 I think it's the best. I, I, I think it is. And somebody might be out there. I understand. Like, oh, I don't care about that. Give me the give me the boxing heavyweight championship of the world. I mean, okay. Yeah, I you know there's something prestigious about that. There's something prestigious about being like the fastest person on the on the yeah. world. You know, yes, the heavyweight champion of the world in boxing for a long time. I mean, it was basically like this man is the if this guy fought everyone in the world, right. he wins. He yeah. is the toughest man in the world. And then, as you said, the fastest man in the world. The long jump in the Olympics. We've talked about that before. That used to be everything. Uh, uh, must see TV. Now, like, <laughs> I know that you're not, you're like track and field guy like me. Like, you know, can you name anyone that's won the long jump since Carl Lewis? No. <laughs> I can't even know. I'm sure that, I'm sure if we saw the list, I mean, we're going all the way back to the, what, the 80s now? Yeah. Carl Lewis won in 84, maybe even 88. I think you might be right. And I'm sure if we looked at the list right now, we'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah. But it doesn't pop out at me. Uh, and that's it because there's not, I mean, Wimbledon, I guess, is somewhere in there, The that big silver platter that they have. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think of individual sports, you know. Um, I think it's the medal. Gold medal would be the one. Gold medal is the closest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's for your yeah. for the country. You hear the anthem. That's always going to be, yes. you know, gold medalist. Michael, you know, it's always going to be put in front of your name. I think I think the pageantry of the gold medal, too, is like at or because what you just said, you won the gold medal, which means whatever, you know, but I, am I wrong for thinking that like the gold medal has been kind of tainted a little bit because of all these weird like, you know, like, oh, this is the gold medalist for the loop de loop competition and skateboarding or whatever, you know, yeah. Um I only respect the I only respect the classic Olympic events. Marathon. Yeah. I remember the story about the curling team, like one of the first curling teams that the US had over there. They were just pounding McDonald's nonstop. Oh, I see, yeah. it was free. <laughs> they didn't care. They had no chance. There's actually a part of me that thinks that like if I had my druthers, this wouldn't do good for ratings. But here's what I would say. Go back to everybody being an amateur. You can't, if you're a pro, you can't participate in the Olympics. And then let's also do away with all the main, like, I don't want to see basketball anymore. I don't want to see golf. I don't want to see baseball. I, I only want to see the sports that nobody cares about until the Olympics. That's the only thing I want to see. They used to have dueling. <laughs> like where you shoot people? Yes, but it was with like wax bullets. So like you don't kill each other, but it's like you have you're wearing something, so you you duel and you shoot at each other. And I mean, kind of to your point, like I, I why is paintball not a Olympic yeah. sport? <laughs> you know, you got paintball teams. I mean, hell, Jimmer Fredette, God bless him, he's gonna win it. I mean, he could win a gold medal this year for playing three. It's not even basketball. It's three on three basketball. Why isn't there? Why isn't there, and if that's the case, why is uh? I don't know. Why is spades? Why is darts? Well, honestly, why is darts yeah. not an Olympic sport? Go fish. Go fish. War. Old maid. Blackjack. They used to also have tug of war. They did. Why don't they? That's see, that's the thing. I want the, I, if I think there should be a rule. If it wasn't played before 1800, it can't be in there. Heads up seven up. Nope. I want a 1992 style gladiators assault run. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes getting peppered with tennis balls i'm not gonna lie by the way gladiators should like that if that was in the olympics i mean that's a you know maybe with like fake tigers or something chariot racing where's chariot racing um, they have equestrian right but it's just the yeah. dumb jumping yes right that's a that's a that's a that's a, that's a rich goofy sport I, I, no, why don't they have like horse racing you know like the kentucky derby style 
If I could add any sport, yes, I'll tell you right now what it would be. What's that? Le- Slam ball. Legitimate. <laughs> Dog agility. You love that. I love it. And what if you're going to have equestrian, right? And these horses doing their thing, which is a sport reserved for like sipping bourbon drinks in Kentucky and wearing giant hats. Why can't we have dog agility? Dog agility is great because it's amazing when it's like the dog is just on a run. Absolutely. But it's amazing when the dog is just running around, not doing what it's supposed to do. I watched one the other day and this dog was jamming around. Yeah. Well, it wasn't unruly. He was like doing really well. And then about a quarter in, he just took a giant dump. (laughs) He had to go. Yeah. But like, could you imagine like Gus, the gold medalist? I don't think French Bulldogs are great. I've seen a couple. They're they're not great. They get tired. We couldn't do it for the U.S. Uh, that's true. Yeah. yeah, you would have to represent France. We are. We have, have a, to get used to a different anthem. We will. Yes. We, do you think you'd like get on and put his little paw over his heart? Yes. <laughs> just, just as would you. Right. Exactly. Yes, I would. I have a little tear. If, if Gus, wanted, I would have a little tear. We'll take a break. Very quick break. One minute. When we come back, three for madness. Brought to you by Fire Wings tonight's game and uh, where they could be and where they they should be and uh is it a must win yeah we'll talk about that next no team has owned the kings more than the new orleans pelicans thursday at seven the kings look for their first win of the season against new orleans it's grabbed by davion pull it pass to the corner keegan for three score the triple what a super assist from davion mitchell david murray now has 14. it's game 80 the kings and pelicans Thursday at 7 on Sacktown Sports. Welcome to the April Adventure Sales Event at Kia Vacaville. Are you ready for an extraordinary experience? We're excited to introduce you to the pinnacle of automotive excellence, the Kia Telluride. During April Adventure, come and explore the remarkable features of the Kia Telluride. It's not just a vehicle, it's a lifestyle with this seamless blend of sophistication and practicality. The Telluride is ready to elevate your driving experience to new heights. Whether you're embarking on a family road trip or navigating the urban jungle, the Kia Telluride offers unparalleled comfort and innovation. Plus, with Kia's commitment to safety and reliability, you can drive with confidence wherever the road takes you. Don't miss this opportunity to experience the extraordinary Kia Telluride for yourself. Visit Kia of Vacaville today and take advantage of exclusive offers during the April Adventure Sales Event. Your adventure begins here. Kia of Vacaville, where innovation meets excellence. Model availability, lease options, and features may vary. Please visit Kia of Vacaville for more details. Three questions, three answers. It's three for madness on the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross. Here's question one. Somebody on the text line just reminded me that uh, if we're really going to go back to the, uh, not the 90s, but the original Olympics and go with that theme, that they used to, uh, they (laughs) did not wear clothing. That is true. I'm good on that. I'm like no, I mean like you're good I'm, with that. No, I, I'm good. I I think you I, like the progress we've made. I do because I got to be honest with you, man. I know they used to do. Like, I'm pretty sure in the original Olympics they used to do Greco-Roman wrestling, mm. and that's just got to get really awkward at some point, especially when bathing wasn't a huge thing back then. I got to think. I would. I would just. What if that, that was an advantage? Probably come stinky pee. Oh, exactly. Doing an oil check, and I'd just be like, all right, I'm fat. Stinky. I'm, I'm good. Uh, the Masters tournament is officially underway and i believe in a a guy we used to see all the time but uh we don't see him anymore because he's on the other tour uh bryson dechambeau i believe is the first to uh tee off so the masters after a delay is underway by the way we couldn't find the victor hovland hole in one from yesterday but just so you know what the reason we look for victor hovland holes and ones is because we get the norwegian call like uh, this one at the players in 2022 Se på det slaget till Victor Hovland! Kom igen då! Jante! Jante! Han drar ni på 108! Vår man! Har du sett om Henrik Björnsson som har sittet här nå i døgn etter døgn? Så går det bare for å lette litt på trykket, så får det ikke med så hårdt i vann til Victor! Du kan bare holde deg ute, Henrik! Savner deg ikke det helt tatt når vi får sånne slag! Jante! What's he even saying? I love the sound of that language so yeah. much. I do. And I always respect all languages, especially people that are bilingual. But I, I just got to be honest, man. I hear the excitement in the voice and everything, and all I'm thinking is Swedish chef from the Muppets. That's all <laughs> I can think in my head, dude. 
That's the that's the face behind the voice. Three for madness brought to you by Firewinds. What? Did somebody say something? I said, mm, work, work. Oh my god, thank you. I looked up and both of you were looking at me and I was like, did I just have a stroke? Like that's one of those things. You smell a match. <laughs> <laughs> Question one, Chris Rulon. Hey. 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 Is tonight's game a must win? Nope. No. We've already defined what a must win is. And no, you do not have to win tonight. You can choose to not win tonight. <laughs> You'll still be around tomorrow. But from a uh six seed standpoint, uh, it is a must win. If you have this is your last Oh yeah, for that. I I've already given up hope on that. I have to. I have to. I'm yeah. just saying, like mathematically. Uh, if, if you have any shot at, at not having to be in the play, you right. would have to win tonight and get a ton of help, including the Pelicans losing now. Play. Yeah, a win tonight. Yeah, I mean, I guess the six seed would still technically be in play, but I think it gives you a much better chance of being in the seven eight, which yes. I think is really, really important. They got to do what they can to be in the seven eight for their best chance uh, to get to the playoffs. So because either way, it, it, whether you're in the seven or eight, if you're in the seven, you're hosting everything to get into the mm-hmm. playoffs. If you're in the eight, you're going to go on the road for a game, but then you have a whole second game yeah. at home. But you could also win that first game on the road. You could. Yeah. You could. Now, if you go, if you're the nine, now if you're the nine, good news, you're hosting one. But if that win doesn't mean anything except for another opportunity. That's right. And if you're the ten, everything's road. Everything's road. You got to win. Well, wait, hold on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're the nine, you host one, go on the road. If you're the ten, it's road road. Yeah. I mean, they could Kings in theory. Let's put them at ten just for sake of argument they could have play sunday at 12 30 against portland wednesday i don't know in san francisco or in la go to then let's say phoenix yeah and then if you got through all of that oh and then you open up at denver or minnesota or okc just uh jason i'm gonna say that's not ideal not ideal at all uh number two please question two brandon egram is out for the pelicans does this give you any more hope? I mean, it should. Hey, they're missing a big star. Awesome. How's in a that? normal season. Yeah, in a normal yeah. season, it would. In this season, I don't know. Although I will say this. Brandon Ingram just kills us, it seems, every time we play them. Um, they I, haven't played as well without him. They they haven't. Um, so it gives me a little more, but they're still 0-4 against this team, and they're still big and long in all the spots that have bothered the Kings. Speaking of, uh, more on that in a little bit. But yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, Zion in their last game, just take a look at what they've done without uh, without Ingram. Uh, Zion had 22 and 7. CJ McCollum, who they still have, 29 and 5. Troy Murphy Jr., uh, 31 and 8 to go with three assists. And don't forget, by the way, you know, DeMontis Sabonis is having a little bit of a rough stretch right now. It's a tough road trip for him overall. And then his streak broke. Obviously, and they're lost to Oklahoma City. He's going up against Jonas Valanciunas, which is always a tough matchup for yeah. him. They're going to have their work cut out for him. They're, I mean, that's a dumb thing to say, obviously, but they really are going to have their work cut out. Oh, by the way, it's the first home game for me, road trip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, you said CJ McCollum. I was thinking about this. Uh, one of the games this year, I think it was here when the Pelicans beat the Kings, his post game interview with everybody back in New Orleans was like, Yeah, this team didn't draft me. So, blah, blah, blah. Any uh-huh. great game. I'm thinking, Wait, are, we're past that, aren't we? Not him. No, but I mean, right, we are. he's had he's had other games where it's like, yeah, CJ's been okay. Uh-huh. Well, Kings didn't draft you then either. No. Like Luca, when he did that the other day with Vladi in the building. Yeah. All right, we get it. And, all right, he should have drafted me. That's that's more of the, hey, there's the guy that didn't take me. I'm going to point to him and, and make a scene. I just thought CJ's been in this league like 12 years. That was more. just like a random, I, I'm with you, like a random he's shot probably played out the of Kings nowhere. 45 times, and he's been good a lot of them, but. And guess what? Like 95% of the NBA has not been drafted by the Kings. Yeah, I that are that all. Weird. I mean, we passed on everybody. Yeah. You're, we're an equal opportunity, terrible scouting group for the years. Number three. Question three. If the Kings lose tonight, where do you have them finishing? Well, you know what? I'll tell you, and you, you respond, but I'll tell you, and I think this is a realistic, I don't think I'm being pessimistic when I say this. I think if they lose tonight, I think they'll be nine. And I think some would argue that's optimist. I don't think I mean, I think that I believe that is the most likely scenario. If they lose tonight and the Warriors win, and again, the Warriors are playing, they're favored by 14 and a half in Portland. They should win. If that happens, the Kings will be in a three way tie with the Warriors and the Lakers for the eight, nine, and 10. They hold the tiebreaker over both, but one slip up and they're 
Yeah, you have to go two and zero. You have yeah, you have to go two and zero after that. And you, you'd like to think one of those. I mean, it's never with this team. But one of those is in the bag. Yeah. Um, with Portland, but you got to win at home against the Suns. And I just I have this terrible feeling that the game's going to finish one and two and lose to the Suns and Pelicans. And I I really hope I'm wrong. I really really hope I'm wrong because that's going to be. That's going to be a rough outing for fans and a, and a really rough way to get into the weekend if they lose tonight and then turn around and lose to the Suns. Well, and the other part is if they're one and two, we painted the scenario of the Warriors winning out, the Lakers won out, and you're 10. That's right. You know, that's right. So uh, my guess would be, you know, I, I, well, the question is if they lose tonight, then it's on them to win two. I do like the matchup with Phoenix. I don't like that a second night of a back to back. Right. Um, they have responded. You know what? I'll, I'll take the other side. And they'll figure out a way to be eighth. I hope you're right. I I really really hope you're right because I hope you guys are wrong and they win tonight. Yeah. Oh, that's well, the good question point. was if the Kings lose. Tonight. Yeah, and I, I I hope they. Yeah, I think we all hope they win. Of course, yeah. remember that's a yes. TNT game right here. Uh, oh, if they it, win, it feels completely different. It does feel completely yeah. different. And you know, speaking of Jason, it also feels completely different when you get your confidence back in the bedroom. I mean, I, I don't know that, but I read it once somewhere. I also read that, uh, and listen up, YouTube chat, that uh, Girth, all right, is consistently ranked as the most important attribute for a guy, along with, you know, of course, being a good person and personality. Talk about the bed. Now, look, I'm, I, I, if you're in your car, you're at home or whatever, nobody can see you. Don't be embarrassed. I'm talking to you. Hey, may, maybe you've lost a little bit of confidence. Uh, maybe maybe you want to reset uh, in, in the romance area. Well, guess what? You remember my friend, Dr. Jack Friedlander. He's, he's back here with his buddy, Dr. Pash. And whether you're in Roseville and also in San Francisco, where their places are, guess what? We've got a solution for you with immediate results. This is non-surgical and virtually pain-free. It's safe, it's effective, long-lasting, and semi-permanent, and it's performed by doctors. Real from a house of learned doctors. Free consultation. Free consultation. The procedure can be done on the same day as that consultation. And they are really good at making everything private, comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Pash, Dr. Friedlander, Roseville, San Francisco. You remember Dr. Jack. You remember these guys. Good people. You want to do the right thing for you. Go to upsizematters.com. Upsizematters.com. Get your girth on. When we come back, Kelly Brothers joins us for an incredibly girthy segment. Good at business. We'll talk business next. Subscribe to Sacktown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys. Live Monday through Friday from 6 to 6. Plus, view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at YouTube.com slash Sacktown Sports. Sacramento weather is brought to you by Arnold Law Firm. I'm Tamara Berg in the KCRA 3 Weather Center. It's Thursday. We're looking at a warmer day today after a comfortable morning. Plan for plenty of sunshine, light southwest winds, and highs today in the lower to mid-80s. Get the latest forecast on the KCRA 3 News and the KCRA 3 app. The Arnold Law Firm has seen how a collision can turn anyone's life upside down in a heartbeat. So remember to be a little more alert on the road and stay safe. The Arnold Law Firm, providing real justice for you since 1975. Call 916-777-7777. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com, and Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. 
Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! First pick! Sorry, kids! Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One NA member FDIC. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at usps.com slash advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. Slightly Stupid. Live in concert. Saturday, April 27th, 7.30 p.m., the venue at Thunder Valley. With special guest, Fortunate Youth. For tickets, visit ThunderValleyResort.com. Don't miss Slightly Stupid, live. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has the selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. Joining us now on Sports Sense, certified financial planner Kelly Brothers. Kelly is an advisor with Cap Trust, one of the nation's largest registered investment advisors. Cap Trust counts among its clients numerous pro athletes and pro sports franchises, but most importantly, serves many Northern Californians through comprehensive financial planning. Here's Kelly Brothers. All right, we're going to get to Kelly Brothers. In fact, Kelly can join us for this. Uh, Chris, if you would, please. When it breaks, we have it first. It's Zach Tom Sports Breaking News. Now, I want to stress here in the world of the Internet, you always have to take everything with a grain of salt. This news is a minute old. But I'm going to O.J. Simpson's verified account with over a half a million followers, and I'll read the following. On April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this time of transition. His family respect their wishes for privacy and grace. The Simpson family. So according, again, want to be careful here because people hack. Things happen. But that is his verified account with over a half a million followers. And uh, generally in these cases, I wait for TMZ, to be honest with you. No joke. Um, but if that is to be believed in uh, O.J. Simpson has passed away, hmm. and that will absolutely uh, dominate headlines. That, in fact, is correct uh, for a while because, as we often say, Jason, when somebody passes, um, I, I would say if there's a light side, if you will, especially somebody that lived a long life, there is a celebration of their life. There is um, there's a dog in the background. There is... Okay. Um, there, there, there is a conversation that brings them back into the zeitgeist, and that, that to me is always a good thing. Gonna be, I would, I would, I would say, uh, gonna be unique, not just unique. I want to say unprecedented. Yeah. If we're doing this, because how do you possibly right. separate the guy that we knew in the eighties and nineties, the eighties well, and seventies, some of the 80s, yeah. yeah, you've got the hall of fame, one of the greatest football players to ever play the game, hands down, no question, who turned into a beloved actor, the naked gun movies, uh, the Hertz spokesman, the TV analyst, OJ Simpson, for those of you under 30, if not 35, this is true, was once one of the most, adored 
people in the entire country. Right. And then obviously that there is never, I don't think in, in modern history been a fall off like there was with OJ. So Kelly, that just, sorry, sorry to kind of, you know, obviously completely take over the first part of our visit, but that just broke about three minutes ago. Again, we want to caution everyone. We'll let you know as soon as it's confirmed by a second source, but uh, there you go, Kelly. And I know you uh, are in our age group. Uh, obviously remember OJ and that is uh, that, that is going to be big news for a while here. Oh man. I mean, we all remember where we were when we heard the first news or when we watched the slow speed chase through LA, how many times are we going to see that later today? Um, yeah. But I mean, and a huge, uh, I mean, didn't he, he went to San Francisco city college, didn't he? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, went to USC, obviously won the Heisman, but yeah, he was and beloved in Buffalo for so many years and then finished up with the Niners. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, uh, uh, a checkered past, no doubt about it, but I I think people remember the uh, latter more than the former, um, mm. and probably rightfully so, given the heinousness of the crime committed. Yep. And also, culturally, what it meant to this country, what that verdict meant. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and there's, uh, boy, we can go down a road there, but we don't, I don't have, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That, we, that, that could take three hours, but... Um, no, that, that is uh, startling news. Hey, I wanted to touch real quick because it is Masters Week, so we only get to touch on it one week of the year. Uh, the Masters begins today. Yep. And I, this is an, a, a, I, I find this to be an interesting business story because we hear every year about the pimento cheese sandwich costing a buck fifty. Yes. We hear about the chicken sandwich, $3. A beer at the Masters is $6. So literally a third of what you're right. paying at most major sporting events. Um, but I should point out, they four years ago, they purchased a strip mall down the street from Augusta National yes. for $26 million, the uh -huh. Masters did. Uh -huh. They put something in there called Map and Flag. I believe this is the first year that it's open. Yes, but it's it a is. beautiful space. If you Google it, you'll see the pictures of of merchandise, of beautiful master's imagery. It's got big screens. It's got bars. It's got food. It's all-inclusive food and drink. And it's the cost for a ticket into Map and Flag is $17,000 for the week. Wow. Oh, you get a good view, though, with that, though. That's the thing, right? You get a great view of, uh, of what, the parking lot. hole? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so they are... So they are minting money. As they'll say, oh, the food and drink is free. No, it's not. I mean, it's included. But 17000 for the week. So they are uh, they're minting money at the Masters. And, and, um, and actually, it feels like a lot of the competitive juice between the players over Liv and PGA seems to dissipate this week, which is a good thing. Quick contest between the three of us. Kelly, I'll ask you to hold your guest for obvious reasons. Uh, Chris Rallott, if you would uh, join us real quick. Let's go around the room. I was thinking about this during the break. <clears throat> Has <laughs> Kelly Brothers ever attended the Masters? Mm. And my first my first thought is he has been there. He has been there at least once. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll am i go with no. No, Chris? I'll say no. No, no, and a yes. Kelly, have you ever been to the Masters? No. Ah! <laughs> Ah, so, hey, yes. it's on the bucket list it's yeah. on the bucket list Save. Dave we ought to go yeah. and do the show from there for a week uh, that's but, right uh, well, but, welcome but, to my entire content for the first yeah. three I literally had a guest on yesterday and asked him on air how I can snake a press pass like I there is nothing in sports I want to do more than the Masters well, nothing it's not even close I have a, a, a new friend uh, here in town who actually grew up in Augusta Georgia and he has some great stories especially <laughs> I guess Freddie Couples mowed his way through Augusta, Georgia, a few times and left in a, with a wake of broken hearts behind him. But <laughs> <laughs> wow! Um, um, go ahead, go ahead, Jason. Yeah, I was gonna say, Kelly. So we got Masters Week, but we just wrapped up college basketball's week. Uh, the men's game was fine, and the men's tournament was fine. Everything was about the women's tournament. Caitlin Clark, South Carolina. Uh, what's the you know, the numbers were staggering. What do you think this will do, though, for future numbers for the women's game? Or do you feel like this year was was going to be an outlier? Yeah, two issues right there. And I think it could be an outlier. Um, it could be an outlier in that this could have been could have been all about Caitlin Clark. Um, you know, if, if Caitlin Clark were not in the tournament, would the numbers have watched who did? But I, I got to point to weakness in the way the men's thing was produced. For example, 
It was on TNT. It was not on the network. I, and that makes a difference still in terms of just picking up the casual viewer. Um, and the other thing, you no know, one's talking about it, but this was the first year the men's game did not have Jim Nance. Um, and I love Ernie Johnson doing the NBA stuff, but he doesn't light my fire as a college host or analyst. I mean, it was weird. It, it, it was not the must-see, must-listen-to TV. So Nance out. And plus, I think I, I just think the men's game is weaker, and I think college sports in general is weaker because of the portal. You just feel less tie to a lot of these schools when you have players who are playing for their third school in three years. And that that's happening. And um, I think that's going to weaken the sport overall. I mean, whoever would have thought that, you know, the head coach at USC would suddenly say, I'm going to SMU because that's a better job. Right. Or John Calipari saying, I, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm going to Arkansas. What? You're leaving Kentucky for Arkansas with a $33 million buyout on the table? Uh and yet, that is the state of college sports we're in right now. So, anyway, want to uh, acknowledge, by the way, it's, it's. I told you I was waiting for it, so I, I think we can now say it's official. Uh, uh, TMZ has confirmed that OJ Simpson has passed away uh, at seventy-six years old, and uh, again, there's going to be quite the uh, the conversation over the next few days, and we'll 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 talk about this a little later in the program as well. But let's get to the uh, A's, not the Sacramento A's, the A's, because they're so proud of moving here. They're not even going to use the, uh, the the city name, Kelly. But but here we are. Uh, they're here. The news broke last week. And uh, baseball, well, or something that resembles baseball, will be here for the next uh, at least three years. Yeah, and everyone uh, – I, I, I think, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a weak team. Um, although they're <laughs> – I mean, their, their record at this point in the season is pretty much the same as the Giants spending double what they're spending. But, right. uh, you know, two things I just noticed yesterday. Number one, a uh, new poll was done in Las Vegas about public financing for the stadium there. No chance. 32% support yeah. that. 32. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is an uphill battle, especially with the teachers union involved now fighting against it. As it's well. dead so if that, it gets on the ballot. It's just, it's flat out it is dead if it gets on the ballot, they're trying to gather. They have to gather. I, I talked to the guy who uh, runs schools for stadiums down there on the phone uh, a few days ago. He says that they've got some mini litigation to get into, Kelly, uh, and then they need to get 103,000 signatures over the next just about two months, which they say will cost about a million dollars to do. And if they do that, it goes on the ballot. You and I both know with what we saw in Kansas City, no chance. No, you're right. Kansas City was really an eye-opener <laughs> given – how much and the success of the Chiefs, obviously, but yeah. um, so so, but uh, you know, even ESPN yesterday writing about, whew, I mean, this is a great move for Sacramento because they may reach a point where location is nine tenths of the law. You're there, mm-hmm. let let's build something in Sacramento, um, and and that's still a possibility. And this might be a case where Vivek was just able to get his foot in the door, and that's enough. So, uh, but but who knows? I'm still, I mean, we're all still excited about it, but I think uh, the feeling all along, especially when you saw the Las Vegas mayor just come out and say, keep mm-hmm. your team. We don't yeah. want that team. Yeah. Uh, that you, that, that was the, uh, because obviously Las Vegas has put a lot of public money into sports venues over the last few years. So I, I think, um, I think maybe they're tiring of that game. Yeah. So last, uh, uh, we, we only got about a minute. Kelly, what's your last thought on the, what kind of financial impact do you think that does for Sacramento, West Sacramento, all that kind of stuff? Oh, unbelievable. And and it should do something. I mean, can you uh, – hopefully let, – let's face it, guys. I, I love our hometown, but we have completely, in so many ways, underutilized the beautiful rivers that run through our town. Agreed. So to have that team right on the other side of the river, uh, I, hopefully that this will lead to – uh, a city and counties, because Yolo County is involved too, obviously, but that where, where we just see new development along the rivers that that for whatever reason has not come to fruition yet, and and that that that's hopeful. Um, that that's completely being hopeful. Hey guys, what I wanted to throw out one other uh, crazy novel scenario. You ready for this? You know all yes. the betting going on on the Masters, right? Yes. So, uh, and and a lot of money is on who? Scotty Scheffler, who that's comes right. in hot who won two years ago. Scotty Scheffler has said if he gets a text 
Friday after, or excuse me, Sunday afternoon from his wife that the baby's on the way. She is like nine and a half months pregnant. Uh, I can't believe they didn't induce on Tuesday. But <laughs> if she, he gets a text, he said, I will drop my bag and walk off the course. And he said, and he said, and they said, even if you're in the lead or tied for the lead, he said, yes, I will. Can you imagine wow. if he had the lead on the back nine Sunday and suddenly the call came and he's on his way to wherever she is. I think she's in Dallas and forfeits the masters with billions of dollars on the guy to win the tournament. Do we that know, would be good. do we know this is, this is his second child or first, do we know that? First child. Remember, he, that's what he said. He said, I will play in more yeah. Masters, but I only get to be present for my first child's birth once. Sounds that's like somebody's said. not committed to golf. <laughs> well, wow. <laughs> well, he Sorry. also said, he also said, I would not expect my wife is going to send that text. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe ever. She uh, better but, squinch till Sunday. I'm telling you. <laughs> and and if, if that kid, if that kid pops out and he's got to leave, they better name it Gus for Augusta. It better be something Masters themed. Well, my she, wife's name. My wife's name is Augusta. So see? every week in our house, it's all about Augusta. No, that's I'm, exactly nice. right. So it works. What, girl, boy, doesn't matter. You got to make it Masters themed if that baby well, pops out this week. Funny story about that. She go. She goes by Gus. So when people introduce us as Gus and Kelly, they think I'm Gus and she's Kelly. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good to see you guys. You, you too. too. That is Kelly oh, Brothers. Good. We'll see you. Uh, we talk to you each and every Thursday at uh, seven thirty. Take care. Enjoy the Masters, Kelly. Thank that's, you. Buddy. That's Cali Brothers. We'll be uh, right back. Uh, we'll do some standings watch. Also, we'll update uh, the breaking news. O.J. Simpson has passed away at 76 years old. Uh, a battle with cancer. More details coming out about that. I'm sure that will uh, invoke a lot of calm, reasoned, measured conversation as well. Uh, and honestly, I just let's 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 be cool about it. I don't have the energy to deal with that today especially since I'm about to switch to electric this spring and save big with American energy. You got to stay ahead of those spiking energy bills this summer with up to nine grand in rebates. And remember American energy will do all the work for you. They'll, they'll, they'll cut out the little uh, box codes or whatever you got to do, fill out the forms. They'll mail all that in on a new uh, ultra high efficiency comfort system. American energy is providing huge rebates from smud as well as spring specials by installing one of many incredibly efficient AC options available to you now. AC standing for air conditioning. Get rid of those fluctuating gas bills in the winter and switch to year-round all-electric with American Energy. Let them perform a free in-home energy efficiency analysis. See where they can help you save for the warmer months ahead. These guys are the best. Learn more. By calling 916-520-9990. That's 916-520-9990. AmericanEnergyAir.com. American Energy. Making the uncomfortable comfortable. Uh, when we get back, we'll look at the standings. Uh, we have some very uh, uncomfortable news, unfortunate news, uh, about an ex-king, and we'll go around the NBA as well next. On the move? Got somewhere to be? Take Sacramento Kings basketball with you. The Sacktown Sports app will let you stay connected to your passion. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with the Sacktown Sports app. At Ashton & Price, we get injury victims to yes. Experience, yes. Ashton & Price has been around for over 25 years. No more insurance companies, yes. Our clients focus on getting better and we handle all the rest. Results, yes. We've collected over $100 million for injury victims. No fee until we win? Yes. Our clients pay nothing until we win. Ashton and Price, the best at getting to yes. Remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. Seems like all this artificial intelligence stuff stirs up the age-old debate of man versus machine. Hi, it's Dan from the Good Feet Store, and let me ask you, would you let a robot cut your hair? Would you rely on an app to teach a kid to ride a two-wheeler? Let's face it, some things require the human touch. People come to us seeking a solution to foot, leg, and back pain after trying all kinds of things recommended by in-store machines or website blurbs, an impersonal, generic approach to solving a problem that's unique to you. No wonder they usually don't work. At the Good Feet Store, you'll meet with an art support specialist who will take the time to learn about your needs, your feet, your lifestyle, and then fit you from over 300 models and sizes of art supports designed for pain relief, better balance, and more comfort. 
see what we can do for you with a free fitting. Just stop in or schedule an appointment. With over 200 stores, there's likely one near you. Find yours at goodfeet.com. For a precision-crafted performance, the decision is easy. A new Acura from Acura of Stockton. Get the driving experience you've been waiting for in a new Acura. Get the best selection and customer service you deserve from Acura of Stockton. Shop in person or use our online express store at AcuraOfStockton.com. Acura of Stockton will buy your trade, even if you don't buy from us. Don't settle for less than precision-crafted performance of a new Acura from Acura of Stockton and AcuraOfStockton.com. Sports. Yeah, just to make it interesting, you know? It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross on Sacktown Sports. Welcome back. Carmichael Dave, Jason Ross, Christopher Lott, the uh, executive producer in charge of all music, joining us right now. And, uh, well, Couple of places to go here. Let me uh it's kind of an upbeat song, so I wanna wanna give it a few seconds before. Uh you know, generally standings watch. Yeah, we can do standings watch. I, I just <laughs> I wanna uh, I wanna make sure we have time. First off, to reset the news of the day. This is going to dominate the day. This is gonna dominate the next few days. OJ Simpson has passed away at 76 years old. It was a uh, cancer diagnosis. I was known that he had prostate cancer, and apparently. Uh, this was kept incredibly quiet. Uh, he was in hospice care, uh, had, you know, this wasn't sudden, but they kept it very, very quiet. And I mean, obviously that's their right. That's the family's right. This will obviously be a very charged, very nuanced conversation. We said, as we said before, um, it's amazing, Jason, you know, when you look back and obviously these are two different scenarios, but if you, if, if you asked little kid, Dave, like, hey, who are two of your, put down a list of your favorite celebrities. I don't know where, but somewhere probably in the top five uh, would have been OJ and Bill Cosby. Yeah. Honestly. I believe that. I, I wanted Bill Cosby uh, to be my dad so bad yeah. growing up. I, I mean, I love my dad. Right, wrong, right. But like the Huxtables, man. Sure. And then with OJ, oh, it's Nordberg. Right. Oh, he's running through the the airport for the Hertz commercials, jumping yeah. over stuff. Oh, look at him on, uh, you know, on the sidelines and then doing football coverage. Like what a great, what a great guy, the beautiful smile, the just way he engaged people on TV. Like you, you fell in love with the guy. Yeah. And I'd only really seen footage of him as a player. I don't remember. Him as I a don't either. Player, I don't really like how good he was yes. and blah, 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 blah. Yep. And so, yeah, absolutely. If, and I imagine uh, Ezra, I forget his last name, the guy who ended up winning an Oscar for it. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, I think it's, it's either on ESPN or Netflix. But I imagine a lot of you will either revisit or visit for the first time the uh, O.J. Simpson 30 for 30. Um, I think it's, what, nine parts? Something like that. Very, very. Six, I think. Six, thank yeah. you. Just. It was amazing. Amazing. That's one of the best features i've ever seen with apologies to our good friend jason harry did the jordan feature yeah. which was incredible yeah there were things in that oj doc i just yeah, and i thought i knew just about everything about the case about mm -hmm. him and there, yeah and and when you look at you know and again it, it, it's tough to you have to remember and I, i'll say it because it should be said um maybe spare a thought today for the goldman family and for the victims of OJ as well, who hopefully are getting some form of peace as well. I think that's important to acknowledge. I'm not trying to dance on OJ's grave, but at the same time, listen, this guy's a convict. Some people will. Huh? Some people will. Yeah, some people will. Yeah. Um, look, if you go to 50,000 feet, the biggest cultural legacy, I don't know what the word is of OJ Simpson. Uh, is going to be that car chase and the ensuing uh, trial. And 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 again, I'm I'm not trying. Uh, the reason why I'm stuttering here is because I'm I'm not trying to be insensitive or take people's lives and put them in a cultural uh, whatever. But the bottom line is that car chase that happened during the I think it was the Rockets and Knicks finals. Yeah. 
is one of those things that I like to refer to as a Kennedy moment. There, everybody has very few Kennedy moments in their life. I was not, neither were you alive for the JFK assassination. But if you ask our parents right now, Grant, yeah. whoever, they know exactly where they were. Yeah, I know where I was for 9-11. I know where I was for the Challenger crash, the, 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 the one when I was in fifth grade. I know where I was for the, I know exactly, I was in a, a little eatery in Stockton on El Dorado Street uh on break from my telemarketing job uh watching over a bowl of soup i think it was exact the world sh- that won't yeah world, everything shut down to watch this and and jason remember al callens is driving the white bronco right. it's being broadcast it is the mother father grandfather and grandmother of all car chases and you're here he has a gun, I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's threatening to kill himself. Oh, Jason, this can't be right. Right. Well, and the amount of support. Remember all the people like out on LA freeways and cheering for him, yes. and supporting yes. him, and, yes, uh, signs, and <laughs> yes. that goes back to where his popularity was. And I think at the very, very beginning of that, people were like, "There's no way this is true. He couldn't have done this. No way. There's no way he could. Not have done that it. guy. Nope. Not the guy I think I know based nope. on television and commercials. No." And so he was incredibly popular. Yes. And you have that figure, something we'd never really seen like that live on TV. Right. Incredible. It was. I, I also, in that time, so I'm graduating from UC Davis at the time, and the amount of people at the graduation, so cap and gowns that had uh-huh. either free OJ, um, white Ford Broncos on their hat, I mean, on their caps. It was amazing. And, you know, the trial hadn't started any of that, but it was. There was a lot of support for him. There was a ton of support for him. And it really was unprecedented. Because what year? It was 94. Was it, was it 94? And was it Rodney King? Weren't the Rodney King riots 92, yes. I think? Because you go, you go from football player to... Uh, alleged, I guess, because he technically wasn't convicted. I mean, but you know, whatever. I won't get into that one. Yeah. The that incident to the car chase, and then to the verdict. Right. And the verdict coming on the heels of the Rodney King riots and how racially charged everything was. Look, it's just a bottom line. I'm not. I'm not trying to dip my toe on the third rail here, but you go back and Google polls that were taken. Is O.J. Simpson guilty? And a few of those polls divided it by race. And it was almost 80-20 one side, 80-20 the other. Look them up for yourself. So you have this massive racially charged situation where you had cameras set up in different places where people were gathering like it was the Super Bowl, yeah. literally for the reading of the OJ verdict. And they would, and, and the way the media did this was just brilliantly insensitive and i use that brilliant in the sense that they captured it all and the ratings were through the, the through the roof insensitive because of the damage it almost certainly did by basically broadcasting to everybody what a lot of people knew which is we still got a lot of work to do racially in this country on, on the whole down the middle thing for stuff like this it's so incredibly polarizing you'd have this camera on a group of, of people of color and then you have this camera on people that look like you and I, and you see the verdict read, and they'd have a, a split screen. And on the left, you have the group of people celebrating like their team just won the, the, the World Series. And on the right, you have the other people just slinking in their chairs. And, and, and people began to attach themselves to this. They didn't know the victims. Right. This all of a sudden, and it was gross to see, it became almost a sport where you were who, which team are you on? Are you team OJ or are you team not OJ? And we're going to go at it and we're going to, it was very similar to sports teams over a murder, multiple murders. Right. That's the legacy. I think in the end of OJ Simpson, it absolutely was a crazy time. Um, As we go to break, I, I guys, I didn't know where to put this and I certainly Look, it's news, and we don't want to be dumb about it. Uh, I'm just going to read the news as it is because I read this, and my heart absolutely sank uh, into my feet. 
uh, at Sacramento King Ben McLemore uh, was arrested by U.S. Marshals on Tuesday and jailed in Oregon where he faces sex crime charges stemming from allegations that he sexually assaulted a woman in 2021 when he was playing for the Portland Trailblazers. He was arrested at the airport on outstanding felony warrants uh, for one charge of first-degree rape, one charge of first-degree unlawful, well, I won't say that out loud, but it's, trust me, it's bad, Two charges of second-degree sexual abuse, according to police, uh, up in Oregon. And look, I'm not going to do the whole thing where, hey, Ben was a nice guy. I hope that, it's, look, if he did the thing, this is where you let the justice system avail itself, innocent until proven guilty, but it's news, and you have to read the news. We'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we got to talk to Sam, Sam Amick of The Athletic. We will completely switch gears from a lot of this serious stuff and start talking about from an NBA perspective and a Kings perspective, very serious stuff going on tonight when it comes to the standings, the games themselves, and the rest of the season. We'll do all that. Sam visits next. On the move? Got somewhere to be? Take Sacramento Kings basketball with you. The Sacktown Sports app will let you stay connected to your passion. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with the Sacktown Sports app. Do you have an invention idea but don't know what to do next? Call InventHelp now for free information on how to get started today. InventHelp provides invention services that help everyday inventors get started with their idea. We have representatives nationwide who will explain the InventHelp process step by step. Over 10,000 patents have been secured through InventHelp's patent referral services. Our services include professional materials needed to showcase your invention and 3D animation and prototype modeling that help you demonstrate your idea. Get down to the details of your idea with a technical drawing. The InventHelp data bank includes thousands of companies who have agreed to review new ideas. We've been helping inventors since 1984. Let's help you next. Take advantage of the opportunity to get started today. Call 1-800-217-4380. That's 1-800-217-4380. Again, 1-800-217-4380. Dirty Heads. I'm on vacation. Live in concert. Every, every single day. Friday, April 12th, 7.30 p.m. The venue at Thunder Valley. Say I'm crazy, but I a special guest, Life's The Elevators. To me so far. On sale at ThunderValleyResort.com. Don't miss Dirty Heads Live. Rescue me. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch. Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Tough Shed, new dog treatment centers, and Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. At Fisher Investments, we may seem like other money managers, but we're different. What makes you so different than the rest of us? We ensure clients receive unparalleled service at every step of the relationship. Tell me more. Our investment counselors focus on service over sales, prioritizing clients' needs. How do you make money? We don't sell any commission-based products. We have a simple management fee based on the value of our client's portfolio. So we do better when our clients do better. What about client portfolios? We get to know each client, their finances, family, health, lifestyle, and more, and then we tailor a portfolio based on their specific goals and needs. Your clients really come first then, huh? Yes, we make them a top priority. Our goal is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. Wow, maybe we are different. At Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Learn more at fisherinvestments.com. Investing in securities involves the risk of loss. I love this time of year when the azaleas begin to bloom and the singing birds' sweet dawn chorus remind us that blue skies and sunshine are at hand. Hi, this is Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. In sports, the definition for the word master is one who's achieved a high degree of skill, and that will be on display in the highly anticipated golf tournament. In the furniture business, a master is a highly skilled craftsman, an artist even, whose work is coveted by those who appreciate design, quality, and durability. John Keyes was the mastermind of Naturewood Home Furnishings. He knew that you wanted your home to reflect your personal style, whether that was a plain coffee table or a masterpiece for you to enjoy forever. 
That's why when you walk into Naturewood Home Furnishings, you'll find the largest and best selection of the highest quality home furnishings in Northern California. Masterful. Naturewood Home Furnishings, off Highway 50 at Hazel. Look for the water wheel. All guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios, your flagship station for the Beam Team. Should we light the beam? Light the beam, baby. Shackdown Sports. Chris Villad with your Masters update. The first round of the 88th Masters has been delayed. By almost three hours due to bad weather in Augusta, first group has just teed off. Uh, Tiger Woods will tee off later in the afternoon at about 1.54 Pacific time. Naturewood Home Furnishings, where it's all about choices and always about quality. The Carmichael Dave Show. He's on the microphone when he's not on the microphone. He's playing a song and when he's not playing a song, he's on the microphone. And then boom! With Jason Ross. No! He did it! Yes! He did! Call or text at 916-339-1140. It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross on Sacktown Sports. All right, we bring in Sam Amick from The Athletic for our weekly chat. Last week, uh, we had breaking news when he came on, the uh, A's in Sacramento. And uh, by the way, 916-339-1140 is the text line. Uh, from the 916, uh, O.J. Simpson passed away. Thank you. Thank you for informing us of the thing we've been talking about for 20 minutes. We appreciate you listening. Uh, Sam, welcome in. And yeah, we'll get to the NBA, but you know we're all friends here, and we're all uh, in the same age group. Uh, I, I, I had said, you know, Jason and I were talking. Uh, about OJ and the conversation that will ensue now. And, uh, you know, th- those are things I-, I call Kennedy moments. Uh, you know, you know exactly where you were on 9 11. You, I, I'm guessing, probably know exactly where you were when the Challenger uh, went down with uh, Chris McAuliffe. Where were you? I'm guessing you remember uh, during the OJ Simpson, uh, Simpson car chase. It's funny. Uh, I think my memory is accurate. But when you mentioned the challenger, then you sent me down to that memory. Um, I think they were similar where it was a teacher actually like putting it on in the TV in the classroom type situation. That's how it was for the challenger with me. Yeah. Our, our, our fit, my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Edwards was, I mean, she even, we even, the, we even did a thing where she like did a bio the week of, of Krista McAuliffe because remember teach this she Krista McAuliffe was a teacher right. that was on it and so we we like had a test where we had to learn about her and, or got to learn about her and the whole thing and Mrs. Edwards was like super into it so she brought in the tv you know the, the old roll-in tv that every kid loved because you got to watch tv in class and we're watching the whole thing live and then it was traumatic I mean you're in fifth grade and you see your teacher just breaking down sobbing and other teachers congregating and coming in so you had this you had the same thing sam uh well that didn't make sense though because what yeah 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 no way i I, yeah yeah i think you you got me down the challenger road i mean all i my my main thought and memory that i have is like so many people like your daily routine suddenly changed and i was absolutely obsessed with with the trial and with what happened every step of the way i mean that night obviously i i assume i was watching the uh the game that was preempted rocket sticks yeah um but it just be you know media has changed so much and back then because there was just you know so many fewer networks and the internet didn't exist you're talking about i mean you know just a massive part of the world's population focused on this one story in numbers that that would just dwarf anything from today's breaking news. Um, it's just hard to explain how much it enveloped kind of everybody's daily life. And, you know, and he was as big a star as there was and, and marketing wise, he was on every commercial. And so you couldn't believe, you know, what yeah. had happened uh, and, and what he seemingly had did or done. So yeah, crazy. Yeah, I know you weren't obviously covering the league then, but it, I, I'm trying to think if, in your <laughs> years. <Jason. laughs> well, I mean, none of us were. I'm trying to think, though, if there was a a story at any time that did kind of go over what you were doing. Like, it was bigger than if you're at an NBA Finals, 
That's a pretty good big thing in sports. But I'm trying to think. Palace of, have the you ever, Palace? Yeah. Was there something that was so large, like elsewhere, what you were covering an event? Oh. You're like, man, this is this is a really big deal that everyone else is paying attention to while I'm at this sporting event. Yeah, I mean that the one Dave mentioned the Malice at the Palace. I remember the Kings were playing at yes. the same time. Yeah, and this is back when media seating was really good, so we were on the floor at okay. Arco Arena, and uh, you know, and I remember the little TV on press row, yes. everybody gathering around it, and basically watched like, "Holy sh, what is going on?" Um, so you know, that one comes to mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, the OG thing, you know, and I, I just saw it like two minutes ago. Um, it's just, I don't know what, I don't have a lot of commentary on it. It's, I you know, you. it's, uh, but it's, it's a pop culture moment to be sure. And, and I'm sure for, you know, for, for the victims of the murder that was discussed for 30 years, I'm sure yep. their families are, are feeling some kind of way today. Yep. We talked about that too. So yeah. a thought for them as well. All right. Sam, Amy joining us. Let's, let's switch to basketball. A big, Big game uh, tonight in Sacramento. The Pelicans, who have already played the Kings four times this year and have won by a combined 84 points, will take on Sacramento. If the Kings lose, they are eliminated from any hope at the sixth seed. I mean, they pretty much are, but mathematically eliminated. And Sam, if the Kings lose, if the Kings again lose tonight and the Lakers, uh, excuse me, the Warriors, beat the Pelicans in which they're favored by double digits. There will be a three way tie going into tomorrow for the eight, nine, 10 spot between the Warriors, Lakers and Kings with the Kings holding both tiebreakers. So it is, uh, how would you say it is pucker time here in Sacramento? <laughs> That's not a, a good thing for this Kings team. They, they no. don't seem to be handling pucker time very well. No, uh, no. And I, and I think, you know, for what it's worth, Kyle Draper and Katie Christensen should start using that terminology. Pucker time. Yeah. Yeah. Sponsor, maybe. Maybe. They have to be careful how they say it. <laughs> yes. right. yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's just, uh, listen, they, I watched the game the other night. I've told you guys that once mainly one of my sons became a legit Kings fan, it changed the way I watched them a little bit if I'm not at the game. And it's, it, my God, I, I just get a more visceral uh, taste of the Kings fan experience where, you know, he's so excited that they're up 19 on Oklahoma city and then just absolutely wants to throw things at the TV a couple minutes later. Um, I mean, it's, they don't have Malik Monk. They don't have Kevin Herter. I actually agreed with your colleague the other day. I, I was listening to styles and Watkins a little bit. And then Alan just made the point that they, in his mind, they just didn't have enough right now they just don't have enough and so those moments where a Malik Monk would carry you offensively are gone um just kind of is what it is they are a a team that can get hot and for stretches you know be better than any team in the NBA and then they are far too vulnerable to you know kind of cold streaks offensively and having an impact their defense and they're just inconsistent so they're playing with fire here. I mean, not even fire. Like you said, it's going to be a playing tournament scenario, most likely. Um, you know, I'm sure Vivek, Ronnie Dive is, is already having nightmares about like a, a playing game with the Warriors where your whole season could come down to, to that matchup that we got so much of a year ago. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think one of the things I was looking at yesterday that uh, honestly, Sam, you know, things change as the year goes along and, and the injuries are certainly a factor. The West being so much better collectively is a factor. But if if we had the three of us discussed before the season that the Kings on game 80 would be ranked 14th defensively, like mm -hmm. I would go, wow, they might be the one seed or the two yeah. seed. Right. So it's so <clears throat> weird that they've had pretty substantial growth defensively and yet they were so good offensively last year, and now the whole league has passed that that number by. I just I, I'm really surprised the way the year has kind of played out that they did improve there defensively, Sam. But it really hasn't netted to much overall growth for the team. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried to make the argument a couple of weeks ago that that would portend good things in the playoffs, and I don't feel as strongly about that anymore. Um, you know, about about two weeks ago, it looked like they could improve on the record from last year when they won 48 games. Um, you know, they have two left right yeah, now. Uh, yeah, three. Three. So, I mean, they can they can still tie it. Um, but 
you know, I, again, I think the injuries, it's no fun to get into because it's like you want to just ignore that part and and hope that they can do good things in the playoffs. But they're down significant players and other teams are getting healthy. And uh, and the defense, I think, would have helped them if they had that offense that popped a little more closely to the level that it did last season. But again, that's just not where they're at. I mean, the other night, you know, and this is on the defensive side of the ball. I took a lot of grief from a few of our our friends in the business about (laughs) tweeting that there's the best defense I'd seen the Kings play Uh all season long against the Knicks. And then they gave up like a 40 burger in the fourth quarter or something like that. Um, So that's that inconsistency again. And and you just don't know what to make of these guys. You know, even Darren Fox the other night uh, has a wonderful game, but then misses that three late. It's not the clutch performance type stuff that you saw all year long last year. So, they just don't have it right now, and it's a, it's a bad time of year to not have it. Sam, I was just literally bringing your tweet up when you said that. Yeah. Um, Sam had said, and this was during the Knicks game, when the Kings had built a 20-point lead, uh, this is the best defense I've seen the Kings play all season long, and it's the perfect time of year to get better on that end. They're fifth in defensive rating in the last 15, 17th for the season. The Keon Ellis factor, which Anthony Slater wrote about, uh, has been big. Now, Sam, I'm going to stand in front of you uh, because the other night, uh, as the first half was dwindling against Oklahoma City, uh, I tweeted, this quarter and a half for the Kings is everything they can be. The ten- tenacious defense, truly good coverage on all levels, communicating, calling everything out, and offensively running their sets and mostly making their shots. If they play like this for 48, they're tough. Now, on this four-game road trip, they went one and three. In two of those games, they blew 20-point leads. And against the Celtics, they actually came back from a huge deficit and had a one-point lead with possession of the ball and eight seconds left. Isn't that just kind of a microcosm when we talk about inconsistencies of this team this year, healthy or no? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for taking that charge for me, buddy. That's I'm I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you. I hear you. Um, But, yeah, it is. No question. They – you know, they just, it's an identity problem. They don't, you know, they, they don't seem to have what it takes to, to do it for 48 minutes. Um, I don't know what that falls on. I mean, it's funny. Cause you know, Mike Brown is a guy who I think his approval rating remains very, very high in town. Um, but it's, you know, some of these things it's, you're going to have to point the finger at the players, at the coaching staff, um, again, at the injuries. Uh, but it's I think the only reason it irritates me and so many fans is because you would rather that you would almost rather that a team just kind of petered out and and kind of sat in what they had become, if that makes sense, um, rather than continue to have these electric moments that make you say, oh, damn, I mean, this is Boston you're doing this against. This is Oklahoma City you're yeah. doing this against, you know, um, and, and then in between that games that just don't make a lot of sense, you can dominate a Clippers team that hadn't been at home uh, that had not been playing well. And, but since then has really found their way. And you look at that win in hindsight right now, and that's a pretty strong win. So um, maybe we're wrong in terms of the mood, the mood with this team is not great right now, but um, that's, that is why not to sound like an NBA marketing campaign, but why I think these playoffs are going to be fun is that um, matchups matter. And the, the parody is such that, you know, if you asked me if I would be shocked if they got out of the first round, I mean, I'd be surprised, but who the hell knows? Because they are talented. You know, kind of thinking on those lines, I, I don't know that it'll end up this way. For the longest time, it was looking like it would, but Sam, we know even in the last four or five days, four days here, things can change. But if the Lakers and Warriors played each other as a 9 10 for that one day, that's huge for the league, but they're also eliminating one team kind of in in quietly in boardrooms in the in the big offices in New York are they I know they're happy overall probably for the play in but are they happy that you might have two of the biggest pillars in the west playing each other in an elimination game um i mean it just is what it is right i mean if they didn't have the play in those two squads would be sitting at home already that's true yeah, yeah. i mean that's the reality um i mean the the play in is giving you an event that you know, involves LeBron James, Steph Curry, Darren Fox, um, you know, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, teams like that or players like that. 
So, no, I mean, the play ins a massive success. That I think it's probably not anybody in the boardroom being upset. If there's anybody upset, uh, honestly, <clears throat> it's teams like the Kings that in the old days would have just earned a playoff berth if so long as they, you know, would have been in the top eight. And then you could get ready for the playoffs instead of having your entire season potentially come down to one game. But what's so what's so crazy to your point, Sam, is that you're right. However, again, that could flip flop in a heartbeat because tonight, if you go by what what probably will happen, I mean, again, the Kings are zero and four and have gotten the crap beat out of them by the Pelicans in every game they've played. It's also their first game back off of an East Coast road trip, in which they generally suck at that too. The Warriors are going to be in Portland. They're favored by double digits, as we said, uh, and they're on fire right now. So there is a very realistic chance that there's a three-way tie, again, for 8, 9, and 10. So the Kings could go from being a little pissed off that they have this play-in thing because they could be an 8 seed to, oh, my God, thank God for the play-in because we're 9 or 10. No, 100%. But the point remains. Someone, yeah, yes. Somebody, you know, I mean, it's funny. We I keep plugging this. It, it, I promise it'll eventually come out. Our player poll is probably going to come out next week. The anonymous yeah, right. player poll. Sure it will. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's the bane <laughs> of my existence right now. <laughs> It's, it's the reason you haven't seen me publish many stories. Right. Um, but uh, a lot of the players, you know, it was within a question about what grade would you give Adam Silver? And a lot of the players um, complimented the playing tournament, said they liked it. But a few of them um, highlighted the fact that they thought, you know, just the top eight should be in the playoffs. That it, you know, you play all season long, that it's a tough pill to swallow to to maybe have that taken away if you – if you uh, drop a playing game. So I think mostly support for the tournament, but, but that kind of wrinkle or that, you know, ripple effect is part of it. Sam, what's the uh, word or what are you hearing about Giannis? Sounds like he's missing the rest of the regular season, but it looks like maybe they avoided something really serious there. Yeah, it seems like it. I, I don't have a great feel. I mean, it, you know, their, their release and their statement and their messaging made you think that they were still holding out hope for the first round. But then when you learn about the actual injury, uh, one that I actually spoke yesterday to our Timberwolves beat writer, John Krasinski, about the fact that Carl Anthony Towns had dealt with this injury. And I think he said Cat missed 22 games. Uh Um, And so that is certainly a red flag. So it's like the relief of not having torn your Achilles which at 29 years old for a guy like Giannis, I mean, that would have been a, just a devastating injury. So thankfully that's not what it was. Uh, but if you're talking about the Bucks playoff prospects, you know, it's, it's definitely dangerous waters. Um, I have a, another story that'll eventually come out. I promise about coaches and trying to look at some of their different legacies and it has doc rivers in it. And I, and I wrote about how like, you know, I mean, I guarantee you Doc's not happy about Giannis's injury, but in terms of the way Doc's season is going to get perceived, if, if the Bucks lose in the first round without Giannis, that's not obviously on Doc Rivers, um, even though the past two months have been really bad with Doc running the ship. Um, so, yeah, it, I mean, it's a Bucks team that was already really, really struggling. And um, Giannis is everything for that, man. Like, I, 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 uh, I do think, I mean, I'm not trying to say that Giannis should be the MVP. I think Giannis should be in the top three for discussion, and he's kind of not at this point, um, which is wild when you look at his numbers. I mean, he's putting up historic numbers better than he's ever done, but the optics around their season are so bad that nobody really cares. What are we looking at? Jokic maybe right now edging, although he's running fast on his heels. Luca into Shea Gilgis Alexander, and then maybe Giannis. Is that about right? Yeah, I think so. And again, okay. I keep I keep giving sneak previews, and this you know the player stuff's interesting. Like like Giannis just got barely any love at all uh, from the players, but yeah, I mean I think voting wise, ESPN had their media poll updated last week, and that had man I want to say it was like roughly 80 votes for Jokic and like 10 for Shea um, huh. and Luca coming in third. I, you know, Luca has brought up the back end big time. I, you know, I might have him number two right now, uh, but I think for me, it would be Jokic and, and Luca and Shea. Sam would, I know it doesn't matter anymore with 65 games, but would Embiid have had a chance still without yeah, the, the parameters? Had, 
Yeah, if you well, no, I mean, without the parameters, no. I mean, no, yeah, with if they forget the 65 limit, I mean, it obviously you can't, but if they didn't have that anymore or didn't have that that they added, like you, the argument's pretty good for him, isn't it? I mean, I'm gonna have to cheat here, Jay. What are we we're talking no 38 games? No way, he's only played 38, yeah. No, I didn't realize it was that few. Look, I and also I'm not trying to get you to give away all of your stuff, but can we talk real quick? Like, are you anywhere, or are you in the? I'm still researching. Like, where are you at with the six man? Do you get a uh, vote? You get a vote, right? Yeah, I get a vote. I've been pretty, you know, firmly in the Malik Monk territory. Don't uh, fall for the Nas Reed crap either, please. Don't, don't, not you. Please no, don't. but the problem with I, I, I'm not because you can't have a six man campaign buoyed by your play as a starter. Thank you. Like Thank you. <laughs> God bless you, Sam. It doesn't make any sense. And Bobby Portis has had moments, and yeah. and you know Norm Powell's had moments. Um, but so I have, you know, I I got a lot of work to do this weekend. I got to do awards. Yeah. Um, you know, they changed the way they roll the awards out, so. Um, you know, that's all happening on Tuesday, I think. So, yeah, lots going on. I guess as Kings fan, I mean, this is like, I guess the most selfish possible thing for Kings fans would be to secretly hope Nas wins because could conceivably winning six man make it harder to retain Malik? I can't even no. entertain that thought. I don't know if it would. Like, I'd almost rather lose him and him win, like, just because, you know, because we support him type of stuff. But there's no doubt about it. Having that reigning six man is not going to make it easier. Yeah, I'll try to make you feel better. Um, Considering I think Orlando is a threat to steal Malik Monk. Yeah. Um, Clay Thompson playing as well as he is. Uh, and this is just my own analysis, not reporting. I, you know, Clay talked to Draymond on his pod, uh, podcast recently and alluded to needing to factor in his own mental health in his free agency, which to me was like, I need to be respected. I need to feel that I got market value. And I personally, I don't think the Warriors are prepared to give him that. And the problem for them right now is that he's playing like a guy who, you know, who, who is deserving of another big time contract. Um, So if the the point being, if the magic pick clay over Malik, that would help the Kings cause. Okay. And, and, and and by the way, sorry, I I should ask you this off the air because I'm putting you on the spot. Just, just to be clear, everybody, Sam has like uh, the entire league to cover. So he, you know, he, he lives here, but that doesn't, I I said yesterday, and again, this is like not reporting anything. It could be full of garbage. I was, I was just talking about whispers. Have you heard any of the same whispers I had that Malik's rehab is going really, really well and possibly ahead of schedule? Is any of that ring a bell with you at all? No, but I'll check on it today. Yeah, I mean, right. you, you're the one breaking news here, buddy. Not yeah. bringing that up. No, 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 no. That could <laughs> now be you have no sources. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything. I just uh, I could be totally wrong. But I, uh, I mean, you obviously, only baseball news. I only yeah, that's yes, right. I only, baseball, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> uh, last thing for you, Sam, and I, I lost it. I don't oh, know. I have no idea what my last thing was. Man, we can't go out on that note. What's I wrong? know. I had a really. <laughs> Let's see. Was it Kings related? I mean, we started with OJ, and I didn't really bring anything to the table there. Oh, oh, then, oh. Okay. Yeah. How about this? We were talking about Kennedy moments and crossover and all that. Shame on all three of us. I'll bet you, Sam, you remember exactly where you were when the, the Kobe news got announced. We forgot was, about that. I was sitting in the same chair that I'm sitting right now. Yeah. And J- Jason, I know I was in my backyard. You called me. You I told me. You, I yeah. I didn't believe you. I mean, I didn't. I know you right, were joking. Right. I'm like, there's no way. What? We it's were all. A, go ahead. I'm going to keep, you know, you're, you're trying to obviously do this whole, where were you when uh, yeah. segment today, I'm going to pivot and give you, I heard you defending Will Clark's honor uh, yesterday, which yes. was by the way, good on you. And Jason, you. you can just go to, you know, where go Watch straight, it, to Sam. straight to <laughs> <heck>. watch it. <laughs> um, and so within that uh, sitting on my recliner, it wasn't even a recliner, a chair in my house as a kid watching the world series when the earthquake hit, Yep. Uh, in 89. Uh-huh. And this is a weird reference, but you remember those old big screen TVs? Like we, we had one, but like was a piece of furniture, not a television. The thousand pound ones. Yeah. yeah. That you yeah. could roll around that you put like uh, potted plants on the top. Yeah. Right. And that yeah. puppy was bouncing back and forth on our carpet as if it was like a, a, a plastic, you know, piece of furniture and a Barbie set or something. Just so uh, the, 
just so the audience understands, by the way, Sam, because there's different people out there. Are you talking about the same Will Clark that has the sweetest swing in baseball history? Yeah, this the guy who I've had a 25 year sports media career, and I still have a bucket list item. Like I need to say hello to the man. And, yes, and you can you should help. Can you get him on the show and we can talk? I can. I He's a friend to, of the show. He's been on a couple times. I need to redeem myself because 13 year old Sam mm. had like an orchestrated meet and greet with Will, and 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 I froze and I had nothing to say, and I didn't make the most of the moment. And then if you fast forward a couple decades, I had a, a buddy who. The worst part is he's a Dodger fan uh, and shout out Bubba Dominici. If you can hear me, my old high school friend uh, who got to drink beers with Will like after a game. And I was so jealous. So I still have it on my list of, of, of you know, meeting the best baseball player of all time. I guess. All right. Look, we, wow. got, we got to go. But here, for, Hall of Famer, Will Clark, come, we're talking about. Oh, right. Wow. Right. Should be. First, first, first at bat against Nolan Ryan, home run. Uh, uh, best NLCS ever against Mark Grace and the Cubs. Okay, here's so he's the in thing. Hall of Fame, uh, first off, Bubba Dominici is completely made up, but awesome name. Nope. Second, secondly, uh, Will did say the last time we had an extended interview that uh, we'll have to have a beer sometime. That's a quote. So I'm thinking, Sam, I'll bring you, and I can tell you exactly what it's going to look like. Remember the old SNL skit where Jim Carrey and Jimmy Fallon were doing the night on the town, and every time they find a girl to dance with, yeah. they both were on either side, just absolute. That would be you and me with Will Clark. 100%, and I'm here for it, man. Do you need great- anything, Will? Can I get you anything? <laughs> Have a great week, brother. Good talk. Thank you. All right, guys. Be good. See you. Right, you too. When we come back, we got a Masters update, an NBA standings update going into the game tonight. Don't go Away, it's your home of the king, Sacktown Sports. Subscribe to Sacktown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys live Monday through Friday from six to six. Plus, view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at YouTube.com/slash Sacktown Sports. Jiffy Lube has a special promotion going on right now. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic Oil Change at Jiffy Lube and receive a $25 e-gift card from popular brands for food, gas, and more. It's that easy. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic Oil Change and receive a $25 e-gift card. So basically, going to Jiffy Lube can get you a free lunch or a pizza for dinner. That's what we call added value for the consumer. That's why Jiffy Lube is number one in the greater Sacramento area for oil changes. Visit JiffyLube.com for more details and valuable coupons months today. De'Aaron Fox plays here. Stolen by Fox. Breakaway coming up for De'Aaron. And a simple, casual spike for the left hand. Kings lead by three. Sacktown Sports is your proud home of the Sacramento Kings. Sacramento weather is brought to you by Folsom Lake Kia. I'm Tamara Berg in the KCRA 3 Weather Center. It's Thursday. We're looking at a warmer day today after a comfortable morning. Plan for plenty of sunshine, light southwest winds, and highs today in the lower to mid-80s. Get the latest forecast on the KCRE 3 News and the KCRE 3 app. Spring savings continue at Folsom Lake Kia. Low payments, special offers, zero down deals on approval of credit. Shop your trusted Kia dealership for over 25 years and tell them DC sent you. FolsomLakeKia.com. You know the same. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Kenny and Jerry here from Bell Brothers. And when it comes to air conditioning, tune-ups, and repairs, it's true. Sure, I could tell you how great our techs are, how they're experienced, dedicated, and trained to do the job right the first time. Make no mistake, our techs are great. But the way you'll know they care is in the details. They show it by arriving on time, in clean trucks, wearing clean uniforms. They're clean cut, friendly, and courteous. They communicate clearly and will give you a price up front, in writing, so there are no surprises. You'll know they care because they will treat you like they care. And like I said, they're also really good at doing the job right the first time. Call Bell Brothers today to schedule an $87 precision tune-up. Our number is 916-444-1234 or find us online at thenosurpriseguys.com. The no Surprise Guys, Bell Brothers. The PGA Club fitters at the Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio know that golf should be fun. They also know that players of all abilities will hit the ball farther and straighter, play better golf, shoot lower scores, and have more fun if they get fitted before they purchase golf clubs. Hagen Oaks delivers the same technology and major brands used to fit PGA and LPGA professionals. See how the game can be even more fun. Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio fittings are available seven days a week. 
Make yours today by calling 916-808-2531. That's 808-2531. So here's a fact. 85% of the population will suffer from foot pain in their lifetime. That's almost everyone. So you'd think there'd be plenty of healthy long-term remedies, but there just aren't right? Hi, I'm Dan from the Good Feet Store. You know, people come in all the time sharing the same frustrating story. Bought this, tried that, been there, done, whatever, all different kinds of things, but all with a similar result. Nothing. A discouraging and endless cycle of disappointment. If this rings a bell, don't despair. There is hope. If you think you've tried everything, you probably haven't tried Good Feet Art Supports from the Good Feet Store. They're designed to relieve, even eliminate, the pain commonly caused by certain foot conditions like plantar fasciitis, bunions, flat feet, and others. Plus, provide better balance and increased comfort. See what we can do for you with a free arch support fitting. Just stop in or schedule an appointment. With over 200 stores, there's likely one in your neck of the woods. Find yours at goodfeet.com. Hey everybody, it's Kyle Draper for Mercedes-Benz of Stockton. Now you've heard me talk about my amazing experience with them when I got my new EQS. I tell everybody I know, their dedication to every customer is incredible. Whether it's by text or call, they are available whenever I need them. And they're also a major Mercedes commercial van sales and service center as well. So if you're a biz owner with a vehicle fleet, Mercedes-Benz vans are a smart business move. They're rugged, sophisticated cargo haulers that qualify for very generous tax breaks. And it is a Benz. Your drivers will love it and your company will look great. Sprinters are available at rates starting at 4.9% APR. So go take a tour of the gorgeous new Mercedes-Benz of Stockton showroom, a half hour from SAC, right off of I-5 at the 8 Mile Road exit or online anytime at mbofstockton.com. That's mbofstockton.com. Jason Ross. He has a lot of pretty smart things to say. He's good at what he does. On Sacktown Sports. I had to run up the stairs, man. I almost didn't make it. I was having a post show with Sam on the phone. And uh, without disclosing too much, we both basically spent the entire conversation slobbering at each other about Will Clark. Mmm, gross. Sometimes I forget that he, like me, so much fun. I wonder if there's like, I wonder what the Will Clark equivalent. It really is an interesting case study because he's not a Hall of Famer. He had a very good career, uh, definitely first ballot Hall of Good. I've seen arguments for the Hall of Fame for him. I get it. But even, even though I admit that Will Clark is as close to a religious figure in sports for me than anyone ever. But I'm not the only one. Like Sam, Joe Pittman, Will Joe Pittman. And there's a hand. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there. Is that, it Sean Cunningham? Is he? Uh, he might I be. So. That Maybe sounds I right. Could be wrong. And I wonder if there's another. Like, what are other people's equivalents? Like you're Greg Nettles, but you no, have a, it's Don Mattingly. Oh, it was Don. Okay, same same. Type yeah, of player. yeah. You're right. You're right. Very very good. Awesome legend, but not a Hall of Famer. One thing we were talking about. I wonder if this would apply to you. I sh- I'm sure it would. Like we've been blessed enough to work in this business and meet some amazing people. But I don't think there's any other athlete on earth. There's certainly other athletes. I'd be. Oh my god. I don't know if there's anybody else on earth athletically that if I was, if I ever had the opportunity to sit down, I don't drink, but that's one of the things I was telling Sam. I was like, if Will Clark texted me tomorrow, because you know, we text all the time, but if he was like, Hey Dave, not sure what you're doing this weekend, but remember when I said, I, you know, 
buy a beer sometime. Well, I'm, I'm in town this Saturday. If you happen to be going to the game, um, love, love to love to go have a brew or two with you afterwards. Like I have a wedding to go to. I would can't, I would say, I'm sorry. I would drop everything. My daughter had a recital. I would, I would be like, sorry, kid, there'll be others. I ain't no Scotty Scheffler. I ain't walking off the course. I would buy tickets to the game. I wouldn't even care about the game. I would already have a hotel room in Uber and a, and a, and a big gallon of Advil because I know that I was going to get absolutely obliterated that night, sitting nervously drinking beer that I don't like talking to Will Clark. Oh, you'd feel the pressure to have a beer. Oh, I would have as many, I would keep up with him as much as I could. Son, you only had three. Right, right. And I feel like he could say that son, you only had three in that voice. And, 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 and I would be, I would have to, I tell you that much, it'd be an overnight trip. I'd pack four pair of underwear because I would be such a little kid again, pinching myself constantly. Like I'm the guy I, who sent me a signed postcard with a little note, the guy that I I used to watch and, 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 and just obsess on. I have every baseball card he ever, that every major baseball card he ever put out. I, I, you know, and I feel like, Everybody has that person. And I wonder how many have that person that is not a Hall of Famer. Right. That's just for some reason. That was their guy. That was their guy. And for me, barely can remember it, but watching him hit that home run, just dead center off of Nolan Ryan in his first at bat, it wasn't the home run. And any Will Clark fan will tell you this too. It wasn't even the home run. It was him crossing the plate. And then when he pointed to his family in the stands, that that look on his face when he pointed was like, this is a gamer. And I used to kind of feel not, nothing like Will Clark, but like Lenny Dykstra, as much of a piece of garbage as he's turned out to be, but like that was my kind of guy. You know, uh, cheek full of whatever. Right, and Will, whatever is and, right. In Will's case, he said it was bubble gum. Yeah, sure. You know, never a, 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 a clubhouse attendance worst nightmare because every game that jersey was caked. Anyway, sorry, I got carried away there. We're supposed to be doing a Masters update. And a... They're still just beginning. They are. Uh, Eric Van Royen right now is tied with Taylor Moore and Danny Willett. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau also birdied the first, is on the second right now, uh, all at one under. Uh, the... Santiago de la Fuente. Santiago de la Fuente, best name. In the top 10. In the top 10. That's Chris's pick to click. He is an amateur. Stayed in uh, uh, the crow's nest. Uh, where the amateurs stay at the uh, Masters. Later on today, we'll pick our picks. So we uh, the way we always run it is, um, I believe this is how we've done it. We'll, we'll each take three, do it draft style. And then I think the scoring was always, we just, whoever has the lowest score. And um, what is it like? I just forget what happens if somebody gets cut. Well, they're not going to have a very good score. I guess not, right? Yeah, but they'll, what, what do we do? Because I guess to get the lower score, if you get cut, then you don't even have a score, so right. good luck. Uh, all right, uh, we will take a break when we come back. Who's hot? Who's not? We're going to go streaking, and we got a three in the key. After that, we'll do uh, in the 9 o'clock hour, we're going to preview tonight's game in earnest, what to watch. Imran Pilati is going to join us for the True Sports yeah. Card Show at 9.30, and uh, Styles and Watkins. So there's your next hour 15. Stick with us. We're back with Who's Hot, Who's Not next. Trying to find out where to catch your favorite team's games? Are you a fan of the Kings, Niners, and the NFL? Well, Sackdown Sports has you covered. Touchdown! Francisco! It's all on his shoulders. Cox rocks. He fires for the win. He's got the triple. Catch all your Kings, Niners, and NFL games all year long on Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. It's Coach Doug Christie here to remind you if you want a deal that's a slam dunk, go see the winning team at Folsom Lake Ford. Folsom Lake Ford is your truck headquarters with all your American-made favorites, like America's best-selling F-Series, F-150s, and Super Duties, or spacious new Explorers and Expeditions, plus a huge selection of Broncos and Bronco Sports, all in stock now at Folsom Lake Ford. In the Folsom Auto Mall, you can buy any new 
new Ford with zero down on approved credit, save big with low interest finance rates, and Folsom Lake Ford always pays top dollar for your trade. Check out the huge selection of inventory online at FolsomLakeFord.com or stop by the dealership to see their most recent arrivals. Looking for something special? Give them a call and tell them Doug Christie sent you. They'll help you out. Hurry to Folsom Lake Ford in the Folsom Auto Mall, your trusted dealer, my trusted dealer for over 35 years and counting. Rivercats fans, we're celebrating 25 seasons of baseball at Sutter Health Park. Join us on Friday, April 12th for our first giveaway of the season. The first 2,500 fans receive a Kyle Harrison Rivercats t-shirt jersey. On Saturday, April 13th, we welcome Sacramento Kings legend Chris Weber to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Weber will also be available pregame for a book signing and meet and greet. To view the complete 2024 schedule and to purchase tickets, visit rivercats.com. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a sudden jolt and our submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dejana Figuerella, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean. And there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiments. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses at things few people ever get to see. Blowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes. When we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. A message from the Ad Council. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has the selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. I'm Ken Korak with your Green and Gold Report, brought to you by Xfinity 10G, the network made for streaming. Well, on the same week, the A's announced that beginning next year, they'll be playing at Sutter Health Park until the move to Las Vegas. Paul Blackburn did some very impressive things on the mound. When he blanked the Tigers for six innings in Detroit, it gave him 13 consecutive scoreless frames to begin the season, the fourth best total in Oakland history. The record being set by Matt Keogh with 16 back in 1980. Want more speed? Well, Xfinity just increased their internet speeds, and they're faster than ever. It's time to get more out of your internet with faster speeds from Xfinity. Now through June 21st, get 150 megabit Xfinity internet for only $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. That's double the speed for the same great price. Click, call, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay with store bank account. Restrictions apply. Equipment, taxes, and other charges extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Actual speeds vary. What's hot and what's not? Brought to you by American Energy Heat and Air. Making the uncomfortable comfortable. Head to AmericanEnergyAir.com to find out more. What's hot? Yeah, hot. Real hot. And what's not? It's not good. Brought to you by American Energy Heating and Air. Sacramento's complete heating and cooling company and second opinion partner. I guess Simone. Simone will be in tomorrow while uh, Chris is going to visit his uh, native land for the weekend. His home away from home, if you will. Um, so she wants to do like some master's munchies tomorrow. Yes. So we each are supposed to pick an item. And I said, well, you know, I'll make it easy. Pimento cheese sandwiches. And she goes, well, where do I find pimento cheese? Why does she have to get it? <laughs> yeah, well, Isn't it a spread? Don't you buy the spread at the store? You, I thought you, you were getting it. You can. I mean, I guess I could. No, it's cream cheese, two jars of pimentos. Yeah. Uh, cayenne pepper and a handful of like that Mexican blend. They call it very uh, grated, grated cheese. It literally says Mexican blend on the cheese thing. And you throw that in there, uh, maybe a pinch of garlic and you blend it and put it in the fridge. It's pimento cheese. You don't buy it. 
I'll buy it. Mm, okay. Gross. Received. I just remember last week when we were first talking about this, you had definitely suggested you were hoping to make some reparations and you were going to be bringing in the dishes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely remember that conversation. But it's okay. I can take care of it. And, and, and so I will. Just let me know what you want. I'm on it. I'm going to take care of it. Don't worry. No, you I guys have it. a late night tonight. We're all going to be enjoying the Kings. And then you guys have to get up super early. I'm coming in as the midday producer. I got this. We're going to have a great time. Who's hot? Boston Red Sox starting pitching. Really? Yeah. Okay. How's They've that? allowed just 10 earned runs in the first 12 games of the season. That is the fewest earned runs allowed through 12 games of a season since ERA became a stat in 1913. Oh, every time Chris talks about the Red Sox, I think of little Chris, a little pudgier. He's in such great shape now. But back, with his old, dirty, ratty Red Sox hat that he would wear every single day. Now he's in, like, good shape. He wears nice clothes. He does his hair every day. That's what age will do to you. He's all mature. But I remember little Chris. Little Chris, do you still have that hat somewhere? No. Really? Oh, you threw it out? Oh, did you actually throw it out? I don't even know if I threw it out. It's just, I don't know where it's at. (laughs) I feel like that hat should have been retired. I don't even know if, like, I have, I have, like, one hat that I wear once a year. (laughs) He wore wore that hat every day. Why do you wear the hat once a year? When I go fishing. Oh, Oh, it's a fishing hat. Yeah. What, do you go fishing and run into, like, some dude that knows me? Isn't that what happened? Or was it some dude that ran into you? I can't remember. On your trip to the get the crabs and stuff, there was somebody that knew me that was on the boat with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know until afterwards. Ah, I got you. I didn't know until you told me. Yeah. Oh, which was was weird. You you didn't wear a hat when you were on the cruise with Dave? No. I don't even remember that. I mean, I do remember that, but like. We hung out every day. We did. Wow, man. We remember. Hey. Remember that one night we just kept getting drinks and we were... Uh, you did buy me a drink. I did. Well, I think I've bought you like 11 drinks yeah. over the years. <laughs> I used to never drink with you. I see. And you, Chris, get a, you get a Coke. And Chris knows too because he saw me ordering a Coke. Yeah, then he just kind of sidles up. I didn't even... I just like... I was talking to someone. I was like, hold on. I'm going to make Dave buy me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then and I'm like, here's the thing. I didn't, I didn't even ask for a drink. I'm like, oh, hey, Dave. He so, already you, had closed out his tab, too, by the time you got there. She's right. I had closed out my own tab. And then I see Chris... <laughs> And he knows I'm going to say, hey, man, can I get you something? And then Simone, like, sidles up right behind him. Smart. Simone doesn't care. She didn't wait for me. She's like, what are you buying me? Yes, I was shameless. <laughs> Whatever you'd like. My game is shameless. Whatever you'd like. Every once, every once in a while, Simone just sends me a Venmo request. I'm like, ah, here. Yeah, I don't know why. Take it. Here, just- now, I was very mad at you for that one because you made me do extra work. So when you make workers do extra work, I need oh, to Oh, the promotions thing? Yes. The promotions out thing. of the blue, I get a request for something I won't say what on Venmo, and I just I say yes because I'm sure I did something wrong, and then and then I think I might have asked. Like, I don't even know if I asked. I just hit yes, and then someone's like, "Yeah, I remember all that promotions crap you made me do? You're buying me a drink." I guess there. you're and, lucky. It was only just a, a beer. I, I'm lucky. I I, I boy so do lucky. I, I really feel lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Who's not other than my bank account? Bam at a bio. Oh, he sucks. Yeah. He's he couldn't do anything against the Mavericks. No. Thanks, In 30 Bam. minutes, <laughs> he only scored eight points, shooting three of 13, 0 of two from the three point line. Oh, but he did have three rebounds. Oh, well, okay. Three. Good for him. Good for him, Bam. Remember when people were like, hey, Bam's better than Sabonis. By the way, is the, is the Sabonis shade over? I guess we'll find out tonight. It's been a rough week. Does it ever end? Does shade ever end? I wish it would end from Kings fans. Yeah. That's the one that surprises me. Oh, he's not a scorer. He averages 20. I'm like 65% shooting. Oh, he needs to score more. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right. Let's go streaking right now. See how we did. Time to go streaking. We're going streaking. Who is the Nostradamus of MLB?
Cue the music. Jackson Holiday. It's a All great right. name. Here we go. First Kings field goal, last Kings field goal tonight. Who makes the first basket? Who makes the last basket? Uh, Give me a Keegan Murray sandwich. I'm Murray, picking Murray? the same guy. Okay. As am I. Fox, Fox. Chris? It's a bonus, a bonus. Hey. hey. Okay. So what happens if like, we get one? I guess it's we each go one and one. Then, huh? Right. Uh, okay, lead swing. So the largest lead for each team, what's that gap? Well, you know what? I'm going to say 12 for the Kings, 16 for the Pelicans. So what is that, 28? Yeah. All right, I've got 26, Chris. <laughs> oh, uh, 32. I thought I, thought I was going to be, like, way the pessimist. Yeah. That, you have 32. Yeah. <laughs> And then random stats, something different, something weird, something odd. Random. I will say. Oh, Jesus. Let me stick with Keegan. Uh, give me five Keegan Murray three pointers. A lot of Keegan Murray's. I have Zion Williamson will have more dunks than the all of the Kings. Wow. All of them? Uh huh. All the Kings men. I hope you're wrong. <laughs> no. I don't. Two to one. I hope he has two dunks, yeah. and that's all he scores. Okay. Because the Me Kings too. had 37 three-pointers made. Yes. Which would be a record. It would be. Yeah. And they would win. Yeah, they would. Chris? Wow, you just jinxed it. Now they're going to have 37 three-pointers and lose, Jason. Jeez. Mine yeah. is Keon Ellis will light the beam. <laughs> oh, I like that. By the way, three of the key is, in case we haven't said it before, it is a jinx-free zone because we're being forced to make predictions. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is a jinx-free zone. Uh, Let's take a break. When we come back, let's preview tonight's game. The Kings are 0-4 and have lost by a combined 84 points to the Pelicans. Let's figure out how they can win tonight next. No team has owned the Kings more than the New Orleans Pelicans. Thursday at 7. The Kings look for their first win of the season against New Orleans. It's grabbed by Davion. Bullet pass to the corner. Keegan for three. Score the triple. What a super assist from Davion Mitchell. Keegan Murray now has 14. It's game 80. The Kings and Pelicans. Thursday at 7 on Sacktown Sports. For more than half a century, contractors and trade professionals have relied on WeatherGuard for heavy-duty truck and van storage equipment. Not just to protect their valuable tools, but to protect their professional reputations. For pros, the WeatherGuard badge makes a statement about what drives them. It says, bring it on. Been there. Done that. We've got your back. Without saying a word. And the folks at WeatherGuard, they're just as driven as the hardworking pros they serve. See what it means to be driven at WeatherGuard.com. Are you stressing about your IRS tax problems? Have you received notices from the IRS threatening to garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, or seize your property? You need an ally. Allies Tax Relief has tax attorneys and enrolled agents that are ready to fight for you. They have saved millions for taxpayers just like you. Allies Tax Relief can help put a stop to IRS collections and, most importantly, negotiate your tax debt. Here's Brenda, a happy client of Allies Tax Relief. I owed the IRS around $57,000, and they're about to start garnishing my paychecks. I heard a commercial on the radio about Allies Tax Relief, so I thought I'd give them a call. After a day, they were able to at least stop the garnishments, and after a few months of negotiations, I walked away owing the IRS only $301. If you owe the IRS, call Allies Tax Relief right now for your free consultation. Call 800-230-5174. 800-230-5174. That's 800-230-5174. Five one seven four. The smarter way to clean your floors. It's time to make the swap. Swiffer Power Mop. Introducing the new Swiffer Power Mop, the all-in-one tool that gives you a mop and bucket clean in half the time. The solution's built right in, so no heavy bucket, and the pad has hundreds of scrubbing strips to get deep into grout. Don't mop harder, mop smarter. Swiffer Power Mop. Swiffer Power Mop. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger. 
for the ones who get it done. Seems like all this artificial intelligence stuff stirs up the age-old debate of man versus machine. Hi, it's Dan from the Good Feet Store, and let me ask you, would you let a robot cut your hair? Would you rely on an app to teach a kid to ride a two-wheeler? Let's face it, some things require the human touch. People come to us seeking a solution to foot, leg, and back pain after trying all kinds of things recommended by in-store machines or website blurbs. An impersonal, generic approach to solving a problem that's unique to you. No wonder they usually don't work. At the Good Feet Store, you'll meet with an art support specialist who will take the time to learn about your needs, your feet, your lifestyle, and then fit you from over 300 models and sizes of art supports designed for pain relief, better balance, and more comfort. See what we can do for you with a free fitting. Just stop in or schedule an appointment. With over 200 stores, there's likely one near you. Find yours at goodfeet.com. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Sacramento's official home for the San Francisco 49ers. Touchdown! San Francisco! Set Town Sports. <laughs> This is Chris Verlade with your 88th Masters update. They're just getting underway after a long weather delay early this morning in Augusta. Bryce DeChambeau, he's one under. There's about five tied at the top of the lead. He's one under through the first hole. And amateur, Santiago De La Fuente, he's tied for fifth. He is even through four holes. Those are your Masters updates brought to you by Naturewood Home Furnishings, where it's all about choices and always about quality. Now let's get back to the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross. The Carmichael Dave Show. He's on the microphone when he's not on the microphone. He's playing a song, and when he's not playing a song, he's on the microphone, and then boom. With Jason Ross. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Call or text at 916-339-1140. It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross on Sacktown Sports. Jason, I thought of you yesterday because I was watching a video, and you and I are both share a common love for the city of New Orleans. You are you've married into New Orleans royalty, and it was a picture of what I thought was in a in a like nice white porcelain bowl. I thought it was a picture of a chicken, and then my my wife corrected me. Or I thought it was a chicken, but my wife corrected me. It was, I guess, a squab, a pigeon, something like that. It was a smaller chicken, maybe a Cornish game hen. Okay. Anyways, all of a sudden, this, like, brown gravy gets poured over the what I thought was a chicken and kind of fills up the bowl. And then I guess somehow they had deboned this thing for the most part. Because then you see a knife cut into the middle and spread it wide open, and it was filled with all gumbo ingredients. Oh wow! And like you, and then you take a bite, and it's got like the little chicken, and then all the gumbo rice and everything that they had stuffed into it somehow. So it just starts out as like a blank chicken, and then the the gumbo juice. Uh, What's broth- that dish called? Oh, they they called it gumbo, but it was okay. like super foofy Michelin star gumbo. And I thought of you. Oh, because I know we like gum. Yes. And you really like the gumbo zerbs. Gumbo zerb? Zerb. Yeah. Which I have yet to. Have. I do like it. Well, I you- like regular. I, I say regular, but gumbo we've talked about is the most widely um, prepared. Like it, that's, oh, we make gumbo. We make gumbo. It's, it could be different from family to family. Everyone's got yeah. a different gumbo. Yeah. And the key, the roux. Always the key. You got to cook. The, it's got to be brick. Brick colored roux. Next time they make the gumbo zerbs. I wish you would. Okay. Bring it what up. about the regular one? I'll bring that in. Oh well, of course. Yeah. Yes. I just I've never had. And you will do the seafood, the crab, and all that, yeah. right? Okay. Yep. Hundred percent. Because I'll probably have mine that has without it. Yeah. Shellfish. Has, yeah. Because you're you are shellfish. I am you shellfish. Have, to have your that. own. Yeah. What if it, have you ever thought about going and getting like they can do tests now? We're like, what if you're not allergic anymore? Um, and then it's like a whole new world. I guess I could be, but I would say we had a station event. It would have been a remote. You know, we talked the other day about going to Styles and Watkins remote. Yeah. It would have been one of our station remotes years ago. I think it was with uh, Grant and Mike. And w- literally one of those things where there was a bunch of spread. I'm like, oh, this is good. What's in there? And they said, oh, that's 
I don't think it was a, it was a crab rangoon maybe yeah. but like little I mean barely any crab sure. like, oh shoot I, I'm not supposed to eat that but it tasted great and then I got home and I had I had welts all oh. over me and I, there was the smallest oh. amounts and I would have been in my yeah. probably 30s 20s oh, okay. 30s so yeah like I, I probably still have it not worth it even just mentally but I didn't like tighten up sure. my throat which but still I don't hey let's test that out that's no. not what I want to test don't want to test that out no. all right well you know what it all sucks anyways. You're not missing no. anything. It all looks good. Yeah. Doesn't smell that great, though. I'm yeah. not a big fan of seafood cooking. Just, I agree with that. Just doesn't smell the yeah. nicest. Fishy. Pelicans and Kings tonight. All right. The Kings. It's not. It ain't looking great if you look at past uh, results. 0-4 against the Pelicans Man. this season. They have lost by a combined 84 points, yet are favored by a point and a half tonight, in part because Brandon Ingram, who generally tears them up, will not play, but CJ McCollum will play. Zion Williamson will play. Valanchunas. Jonas Valanchunas will play. They this, got their guys. For this, the uh, Herb Jones will yeah. play. This is a tough, Trey tough Murphy. team. Trey Murphy yeah. who had 30-something the other night. Uh this is it must be pointed out as well this is the first game back from a road trip and the kings notoriously and almost inevitably have put up poor performances the first game back from a road trip although i want to be fair here if i remember correctly yes their last uh, East Coast trip, Toronto, Washington, and Orlando, they ended up beating Philadelphia by 12 in their first game back, but then they lost those two to uh, Dallas in yeah. a row. And that's really where the schneid started. As a matter of fact, since that win against Philadelphia, the Sacramento Kings are 3-5, and five, not the way you want to end the season. Hopefully that turns around tonight. And the four of the losses, not the first one at Dallas because they got crushed in that Yeah. One. But we talked about the road trip. What, two 20-point bleeds that they yeah. blew? A lead in the closing seconds with Boston, and they could have won the second Dallas game. They 100% could have won the second Dallas game. In fact, I believe, wait, didn't? Yeah, they were ahead late. Yeah, but didn't they also, did they have a 20-point lead that game? Well, did it get that high? I I thought they I had a know. pretty. It might have been a decent. So I don't remember it being that maybe, high. Maybe it wasn't 20, but I, I know the first part of that game they oh they were at 34 26 after one so that's an eight point lead they were up nine going into the half they were up nine going into the fourth and then they were outscored by 13 just 21 points in the fourth quarter of that one when you look at the oklahoma city game uh they were outscored 28 18 in the fourth quarter 39 23 uh, in the third quarter, and and so that's really they had the lead in all of those fourth quarters. Yes, they did. Now, I think it's also important to point out too. Trying to find, I believe it was Dece yeah December fourth. Remember as well, uh, the Kings had and came out pretty darn strong against New Orleans in that game. Yeah, this is the one, the in-season tournament uh, to get to Vegas. Yes, December fourth, I believe, at home, uh, and then the Pelicans just absolutely. Uh, turned it on. Uh, it was that second quarter where they outscored Sacramento 34-25, and uh, the Kings lost by 10 in that one. So they must be how the Lakers feel about the Kings, right? Like the records are basically the same. Yeah. But the Kings have beaten them four times. Yep. Kings and Pelicans records is really not much different. Pelicans no. a little better, but you go, man, they four times. It, it really, honestly, with all the teams that the – with all the teams that the Kings have played this year, the two that just have their number, it seems, are the Pelicans and the Rockets. Yeah. Those 0 oh, 7. 0 oh, 7 combined. And really, I mean, a, I believe they had one pretty close game against Houston. I want to say it was the second as well. Of yeah. Well, and the one here, they had, the, that's right. That's another one. I think they had the big lead. Yeah. That's been the, t and, 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 and Jason, I find myself when it comes to this team. Am I being too simplistic when I say, but it, when I say, if you can build a 19 point lead against the Thunder, then you can maintain a 19 point lead against the Thunder. Like, why is it that yeah. if they're able to build these leads, why do they lose them? Yeah, I would say uh, of the, some of the games, the Thunder won, and I know Katie said it yesterday, I think made some sense. It was a little bit of a believable turnaround in a sense that. The Kings were making so many threes in the first half. Yes. And OKC was not and not shooting the ball very well. 
Now, I would not have guessed that the Kings would have been percentage points off by the end of the night of having their worst shooting night of the season. Not with the way they started. And almost won a game on OKC. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're just, the ups and downs have just been so crazy in season, in game, and uh, they're still continuing here to game 80. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm looking at it right here. The Kings had a high... They had a 93% win probability with 18 seconds left in the second quarter. Yeah, that's when their lead was pretty large. Yeah, that's 64 45. And I understand you're not going to make 80% of your threes all night long, but I did feel that, yes, did Oklahoma City turn on? Sure. That they were going to, you know, the Kings regressed to the mean. And uh, the they thunder. cut it to two, but six minutes left in the third quarter. Like they did it like that. Like I, that, and that's where I go. Okay, this like is if it takes them a quarter and a half or two quarter. Like they caught them right at the end. No, they no, they did it quickly. The, the, it wasn't all. Oh, hey, Oklahoma City got hot. It was also the Kings. Just they just. I think it's a combination of teams. You talking about scouting reports? The, nobody's afraid of Sacramento. They. It, this is, I guarantee you, at halftime, Mark Daniels going, this team will give up leads. Yeah. All you've got to do is punch them in the gut, and they will fold. Right. And then we talk about, we've. I think we've all realized now that this roster, if we're talking about a championship team, it's certainly not good enough to do that. But if you're Monty McNair in that front office, you're looking at this going, yeah, we've got to change things, but what do you change in the sense that, okay, they 2-2 two and two against the Thunder, 3-1 and one against Denver. Two and one against Minnesota. If this is the best of the yes. West, they've been able to they beat Milwaukee. They beat uh, swept Orlando. Right. And we know all the bad things too. So it's like, wait, when it's right, it's it's not far off. But what's the off? What is missing? And that's what, hey, they get paid to figure that out. Well, they need to figure it out. And they need yeah. to start tonight or it's going to be a long night. We'll take a break. What to watch. We've got a lot of the Western Conference. Well, okay, we've got a couple teams in action that we care about. Also, uh, some baseball. And, uh, you know, day one of the Masters, Jason, and we'll uh, we'll check back in on that. I saw, uh, oh, God, who was it? Was it, uh, was it Auburg, I think? Um, oh, no, it was Bryson DeChambeau. I, I don't know if you've caught it on TV or not, but this dude still has uh, power. Yes. I, I, his drive on two was in insane like godlike and i sat there thinking if he can drive like that on on the second hole then why can't he drive a hoblet truck because it is the last call sales event going on for dodge at hoblet dodge chrysler jeep ram in woodland 75 years in business 75 new dodge chargers and challengers at ginormous discounted prices this is all to say thank you to, to, to you, yes. Right now, get your hands on the last of the gas power 2023 Dodge Charger and Challenger GT and SXTs. Save up to 13 grand off MSRP, but you gotta hurry. You only have till April 13th. That's that's this weekend, kids. Some of the biggest savings they've ever seen. Because this is the last of the gas powered Chargers and Challengers. You gotta get moving to Hoblet Dodge in Woodland. Or search, select, and save through the whole inventory at hobletdodge.com. Unbeatable prices, unbeatable selection. Nobody beats Hoblet, period. What to watch coming up next. We'll give you a master's update. Imran Pilati will be in studio at 930 before crosstalk with Styles and Watkins. Don't go away. We're right back. Did you miss any part of our live local shows? Don't worry. You never have to miss them again. Check out SackdownSports.com and search our podcast page and play our shows when you want. The Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and The Drive Guys. Plus, other podcasts like Return of the Empire, Return of the Roar, The Stingers Up Podcast, and Golf to Go with Frank LaRosa. They're all available right now on SacktownSports.com. The 
They bleed black and purple. It's the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross on your local sports leader, Sacktown Sports. Emerald Pilati coming up next. He'll be in studio. See what, what signings he's got going on. Yeah. You can ask him about your Will Clark cards. I, I mean. Hey. Yeah, I think the answer is going to be something like, it has a lot of value for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot better than Darren Ravel. What? Dar- well. <laughs> you remember th- that tweet? Uh, which one? It was... Uh, Oh, uh, my father just passed away. Uh, all of his baseball cards are here. What do you guys think? Mostly junk. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Darren's not. I like Darren because he just doesn't. He has no read the room, dude. Yeah, he has no ability to read the room. What was the one he was like? Every time he he has like a bunch of MLK Junior memorabilia. Yeah, he calls it memorabilia. Yeah, and and like everyone's like, why don't you put that in a museum, dude? And he's like, yo, I got this like MLK rookie card when he was at the thing. <laughs> it's like, bro, seriously, you might want to just uh, again, don't read the room or donate that somewhere. Hi, Steven. Hi, Dave. Uh, Hi, Jason. Hi, Steven. Hey. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Uh, your wife has a piece of the Berlin Wall, though. She does. She does. That's yeah. true. We so found I- that out in the last year. She's Why got is that a, in the museum? She's got She's got a uh, – it is. It's in the family museum. <laughs> it's open uh, 9 a.m. to 9.01 oh, daily. Oh, okay. Oh, dude. Uh, do you, are you selling tickets? Can, uh, I get, can I get in? Ticketmaster.com. Do you know somebody that can hook me up, maybe? I've got connections. I'll let you know. She's she's got, she's got time. She'll be there. Wow. What? Just oh, a, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Anyways. Well, hey. Hey. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet you guys, man. I wanted. I just wanted to call to say that, man. Pleasure, pleasure to meet, to meet you. you guys the other day, dude. You guys are. Uh, I told Jason this. You guys are a lot bigger in person than uh, than I than I thought. But you said um, taller then. Yeah, you said yeah. Taller is a lot different than bigger, Stephen. Although you're correct. I mean, Dave, you know, you know, you got you got kitchen gadget issues. You know what I mean? You have an addition to kick, kitchen gadgets and food. There's no, there's no shame in that. Steve have is, no shame. There is no shame in having no shame. He is justifying how fat I am, <laughs> and somehow that is I'm not even justifying worse. how fat you are. You're justifying how fat you are. That's I'm true. Just, uh, That's true. I'm just here. I'm just here to. Uh, the coke that's you awesome. know i'm here for the coke <laughs> well listen i'm gonna go flush you my guys. head thank Love you, you thank you steven Bye. it was great to see steven. it was great yeah we even uh we even i even gave him a hug you believe that you gave him a hug <laughs> i did we did a handshake hug oh well, like that's a, hand, not a hug handshake and pull in it like was around the brace no you need you need both hands around to be that was a bro hug. Then there's a midsection touch and it's weird that's that's hug. why he said you're bigger that's a real hug Upsizematters.com. What? I think you just kind of did the. It was, so it was like a handshake pull in. I it was it was the handshake and the pull in, but then I think both his arms went around me and like oh, added my so back. So he hugged you. Yeah, and then I think I just kind of fished another arm. I was like, all right, let's go. It's like when Chris and I hug before every show. I'm pretty sure that's never happened. It's never, <laughs> nor, nor will it ever. <laughs> like I could be like Chris. I've only got a week left. This is our last conversation. It's been great working with you. And we might, like, might do a fist pound. I, would, I, would, I think I'd, I'd grab your shoulder. like yeah, Something like that. Then, but even that good. would, I'd be like, eh. You okay. know what would be the best after <laughs> that? Piece, so but, if that's the conversation, yeah. you guys part ways. Yes. You say, I've only got a week left. The next text you got from Chris would be the best. Why? I don't know. I don't know what it would be, but it would be hilarious. You know what it would be? It'd be like, dude, I was hanging out with Jason. And we had like, and you, and I was thinking of doing this bit where like we were all like, you know, when, when we talk and our backs are against the wall, and I was gonna be like, hey, everybody who's not dying, take a step forward. <laughs> Something like not that. Not so fast, Dave. Yeah, that's what or, a, or a gif or, or like, a like a meme. Yeah, maybe the meme you had earlier. Hey, you're not going to need, need that extra egg maker, are you? <laughs> that's exactly what it would be. And I would want that. That's what I would want. I would want deep, dark horrible humor if that was happening i want to be ooh, ooh, come here, come here, come here. yeah that seems worse it is worse no exactly be like hey so what 
Is there a gr- what's the grace period on your wife? Like, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Is it an A situation? Right, or? right. Exactly. What, what do we do? You're relocating. Uh, tonight in baseball, the A's are taking on the Rangers. They lost yesterday, Jason. Boo. Is that it for them? Got to get this team ready to be in Sacramento. Got to get ready. Yeah. You know what? We, we're we going to cheer the losses a lot louder than they're getting cheered right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Uh, tonight uh, on TNT leading into uh, the main event, the Knicks and Celtics. I'm actually uh, I'm a JV game. Well, I, I yes, I agree with you. Uh, that game is in Boston. Um, what's going on here? Why are the Knicks favored by two and a half? Is Boston sitting everybody? They have to be. Yeah. They have to be 35 and three at home, and the Knicks are favored by two and a half. That's that's hinky. That's Sam Hinky. Yeah, somebody's got to be sitting. Uh, Warriors and Blazers, uh, that's important for the Kings because if the Kings lose to the Pelicans tonight, and by the way, 7 o'clock, TNT, only local broadcast right here on Sacktown Sports. We invite you to tune in. The Kings are favored by one and a half. Interesting. It is very interesting. Should the Kings lose and the Warriors win with the idle Lakers, they will be in a three-way tie with L.A. and Golden State for the 8, 9, and 10 spots, and I am going to be in a mood. Hey, your scenario is still in play. Which is? That Kings fall to 10. Yes. Have to go to San Francisco or Los Angeles. Yep. End their season. Yeah. Then get in that next game, have to go to San Francisco or Los Angeles, uh-huh. the other one. End their season. End their season. I would also be fine with like ending both of their seasons here too, by the way. By just winning and oh, I see what you're saying. That'd be even be better. Yes. Wait, is that possible? No, you can't do no, that. You can only in one. Right. Of you can't. I'm just saying I'd like it. Well, no, that's Wait. not true. No. If they were nine. If the Kings were nine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You're well, right. Well, one would, would be here, home. one would be. The one would be on the road. Yeah. Either way. So, anyways, that's your update. Yes. <laughs> We, uh, we nailed that one. So 7 o'clock tonight, Pelicans and Kings right here on Sacktown Sports. I know we're talking about the three-way scenario. Hello. Hi. Three-way tie. How are you doing? Uh, what about the four-way tie? Suns, Lakers, Warriors, Kings. Yeah, so that was, the scenario was basically, okay, let's say the Kings lose tonight, which is possible, and then the Kings win both. Suns lose both, which is possible. We Lakers went out and the Warriors went out. Everybody's the same record. Mm. That would be chaos. It would be. Mm. I kind of like chaos. I don't like chaos when it comes to Sacramento. Yeah, but what if it benefited Sacramento? Do we even know like what the schedule is? Like, I don't. I don't even wait. No, I'm saying like, okay, so the Kings finish up what Sunday uh, against Portland? Yeah, the eight nine seven eight game is Tuesday. The nine ten game is Wednesday. And if they're in the following game, that'd be Friday. And then obviously the playoffs for them would start Sunday if they made it playing Friday. So there is a chance if we're going with the most pessimistic, worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. The last day of the Sacramento Kings season is next Wednesday. Correct. That's the worst case. Worst case scenario. And next that, is Friday would be the next worst case scenario. <sighs> now, how does that work if the Kings – get beat in the play-in do we instantly go to the draft and start doing draft stuff yeah, we, we're a lottery team mm, that does that mean we go back to vegas summer league and do all that are we on tankathon doing my i think draft? it's a little too late so you know this draft is supposed to be not great right let me ask you this as a king's fan this is one of the basketball jesus things I'm not going to tell you Jesus basketball. Jesus is not going to tell you how far the Kings could have gone, but let's say the Kings end up the nine or the 10 and basketball. Jesus says, Hey, check it out. Yeah. I'm going to give you a choice. You win these next two games. You get in the first round. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen. Then you might get swept. You might, you might win the NBA finals mm-hmm. or you lose. You're out of the playoffs, but you're going to win the lottery and get the number one pick. Which do you choose? The first one easily. Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. You would take the number one pick in the draft? Who is it? Don Tavian Hart. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. 
I think it's you know the only name I can think of is uh Rob Caitlin Dillingham. Clark. <laughs> Caitlin Clark, right. I've heard Rob Dillingham's name from Kentucky. Right now it says it's Alexandra Saar from uh Perth, who's seven one and a seven foot one from Australia, Jason. Nineteen will be nineteen next year. Oh, but his second jump. <laughs> also, hey, as we go to break. If we'd have drafted Marvin Bagley, Malik Monk would still be playing right now. Or excuse me, if we did not drafted Marvin and drafted Luca, Malik Monk would be playing right now. How's that work? Because Luca fell on oh. Malik and hurt him. Oh. And then okay. he yelled at Vlade meanly. Yeah, he did. He did. Vlade's just sitting there eating some popcorn, getting ready to go have a smoke. I think I said this a while back. Why don't we say that? Yeah, they didn't draft Luca. They didn't draft FGA in that draft. No, so they didn't. Could have had him. Is Human. he better than Luca? Dude, how much would they have gotten slammed if they'd have drafted SGA in the second? In what the second are they pick? doing? Right. Like, how long would that allow? That right. will last because time? of what? Mock drafts? Yeah. If you think he's right, do it. Maybe they're called mock drafts because we should make fun of them. Good they're point. Stupid. Mock we'll the mock. We'll take a break when we come back. Imran Pilati, true sports cards. He's going to come on in and let us know what the haps is with everything, including, I'm going to ask him, I wonder if a certain sports card just increased in value today. Yeah. We'll talk about it next. No team has owned the Kings more than the New Orleans Pelicans. Thursday at 7, the Kings look for their first win of the season against New Orleans. It's grabbed by Davion. Bullet pass to the corner. Keegan for three. Score the triple. What a super assist from Davion Mitchell. Keegan Murray now has 14. It's game 80. The Kings and Pelicans. Thursday at 7 on Sacktown Sports. I'm Craig Ashton of the Injury Law Firm of Ashton & Price. Whether you've been injured on a bicycle, as a pedestrian in a slip and fall, auto, Uber, Lyft, or big rig accident, you need Ashton & Price in your corner. When you call Ashton & Price, there's no chatbot telling you to hit three for accounting. You're greeted by a real life person who will immediately transfer you to an experienced attorney. The consultation's free, and there's never a fee until you win. Remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton & Price. Slightly Stupid, live in concert, Saturday, April 27th, 7.30 p.m., the venue at Thunder Valley, with special guest, Fortunate Youth. For tickets, visit ThunderValleyResort.com. Don't miss Slightly Stupid, live. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle Draper here for Mercedes-Benz of Stockton. I get a lot of compliments from my friends about my new EQS SUV. Mercedes has proven that electric cars can be gorgeous and stylish. My EQS is the finest vehicle I've ever had. And some of my friends have even asked, what's it really like to have an electric Mercedes? Is it easy to own and operate? Is it easy to charge? Well, it's as easy as owning a regular gas guzzler, except you never have to put gas in it. And I never stress about battery charging. It's got a long range, so no problem there. And it's easy to charge. You just plug it in, and that's it. Right now, Mercedes-Benz of Stockton is offering up to $19,000 in Mercedes-Benz incentives on select new vehicles and certified pre-owned Mercedes vehicles, as low as 1.99% APR for qualified buyers. So head on out to Mercedes-Benz of Stockton. It's just a half hour from Sacramento, right off I-5, or online anytime at mbfstockton.com. Be listening to Sacktown Sports each Friday morning for the Rivercats Weekend Report with team updates and everything you'll want to know about the next exciting Rivercats homestand. Let's go, Rivercats! Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today. 
and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. Capital Casino has been serving the greater Sacramento area in the same convenient downtown location for over 20 years with plenty of close by well-lit parking monitored by security staff and offering the most variety of table games in the region in a safe and friendly environment. Best food, best service, and the best action, that's Capital Casino. For more information on tournaments and gaming, check out their website at capital-casino.com. And please remember to gamble responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. Dave, sources, and he just kind of tells it as he gets to the point. Jason Ross. He has a lot of pretty smart things to say. He's good at what he does. On Sacktown Sports. All right. Uh, well, Jason, you have an update. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, no Emron today. There's a little circumstances there that uh, will keep him from being here today. Very understandable. Yes, uh, but we will uh, we will we will make that back up. But he'll be here Saturday for a show. And there all you go. That. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a legit. Well, that's what I was going to ask him. You got to ask, you know, not to be insensitive or nothing. But what happens to OJ Simpson cards? No, honestly. I think uh, no, I think there was maybe his last visit or the visit before you had asked about like I mean, some mm-hmm. once people have retired, you've yeah. kind of reached peak value and look it's morbid but it does like kobe's cards went, went through crazy the roof, through the roof and, and he was already a hall of famer all that i mean all the legendary career had already yeah. happened but it was you know i want to say and i was a kid yeah. so it was like a school like crab feed where they have the um the uh what is it um i'm trying to think of it like an auction like yeah. a written auction yes. and one of the Prize, one of the things was an autographed OJ Simpson rookie card. Oh. And I want to say this was post incident <laughs> okay. and pre trial. Okay. Now we're in post incident. Okay. Well, and now we're post incident, post him being alive. So, like, yes. Like, Thank I, you. I would imagine, like, an autograph. Like if there were, but also that's kind of like a morbid collect. Like nobody's like, hey, I got this OJ rookie. They're not selling it for his football yeah, stuff. Yeah, like I have an OJ card. It's yeah. nothing. I think it's when he's actually on the 49ers. I don't even know what regular value. It's not graded. It's honestly, I don't even think it's in very good condition. Sure. But I saw, you know, I was, it was a while back, maybe during the pandemic, and I kind of got back into the cards again. I go, let me see even you kind of forget what you have. And I was looking through, I go, oh, wow, I have this OJ Simpson card. I go, I don't even know what this would be worth. I, yeah, it's one of those like weird, like the kind of collectibles I like, like Lincoln's hair or something. It's like one of those right. collectibles that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, it's going to get a feeling from somebody. Like, yeah. some may go, hey, he's a great player, wasn't a great player, or her, whatever it is. But it's like, oh. But are they collecting it more for like him as an athlete or more for his place in the world of stuff? Yeah, I, it's. I mean, if you get it now, I think that's exactly what it is. Here's the question. Yeah, now, okay, sure. I'm going to ask what I know is a stupid question. Like, it's one of those. Like, it's going to sound super insensitive, but I like. I this is one of my like childlike. I honestly wonder. Did any? I can't believe I'm asking this. Did anyone ever? Was there ever like a card that came out that had anything to do with like the court case? Honest to God, like a oh. like a car, like because oh, they're one hundred percent has, has to have been to right, have been. like like OJ guess. at the at the desk or something. Honestly, it might have been all the attorneys. Yeah, Marsha Clark, you know, all the way through, you know, oh, prosecutors and everybody, I Judge just, Ito. I, just, I guarantee they're playing cards. There that. have to yeah. be they, that's great. There has to be a Judge Ito card because people were. I mean, they would have monetized that back Jay then. Jay Leno, remember Jay Leno had a bit the dancing Itos on the Tonight Show. I like that was a whole funny. thing. Um, also, gosh, Christopher Darden, Christopher Darden, yeah, Marsha Clark, yeah. Robert Shapiro. Yeah, on the other side. And then Johnny Cochran. Uh or Johnny Cochran. If the glove don't fit, you must have quit. Who was the Robert Kardashian? Yes, but there was that old the, the older Texan, like uh Oh, uh F F Lee Bailey. Yes. Would we have the Kardashians? 
If it wasn't for that? No, there is some, isn't there one of the, something came out in that uh, OJ piece about that, right? Wasn't there like. I think so. Yeah. I th- yeah. There was something about. Something popped out. It's so <laughs> weird. The ties that yeah. happen. All right. Anyways. Do you have an OJ card? I don't. I don't. I don't. Not because I purposely don't. I just, right. yeah, was, I just was, was before my time, time and it never came across my uh, my collection. Uh, let, let's real quick. I want to play this. I didn't know where to put it. Here's a good place uh, because we were going to talk cards anyways, and this is baseball. Uh, Foul to- Territory is a uh, popular show slash podcast, whatever, and uh, they had Ken Rosenthal, who's one of the most connected uh, writers uh, in the game. He was talking um, uh, uh, about A's payroll okay. in relation to coming to Sacramento. And uh, here's what he had to say. This was, I want to say, uh, yeah, I believe it was yesterday, as a matter okay. of fact. So so fairly uh, current here. Sacramento. You wrote a long column on Sacramento. I mean, this, this also kind of got you bubbling a little bit. So I'm just going to let you rant on, Junior. Well, what I wrote about was this idea that the A's are putting out there that they are going to ramp up their payroll in Sacramento. And ultimately, when they get to Las Vegas, they plan – or so they say, to have a top-tier payroll, bottom, or I'm sorry, top half of the league. The numbers that I heard and reported were 130 to $150 million payroll in the years leading up to Vegas in Sacramento, and then once they get to Vegas, $170. they are at 60 right now. So I will believe that when I see it. I'm not quite sure how they would get there, and I talked to a few players, and I asked, hey, would you want to sign with the Sacramento A's? And most of them had their reservations from the minor league park to the way the team is run to virtually everything. You can overpay free agents. Yeah, you can overpay them. And maybe that's what the A's will have to do. You can even sign some of your younger players to extensions to ramp up payroll in that sense. So it doesn't necessarily do that in the early years. You can do all kinds of things. You can take on bad contracts. None of these things I'm suggesting are particularly wise from baseball perspective. A baseball perspective, excuse me. So I don't know where they're going with this. And it just seems to me that they have said a lot of things over the years, a lot of things about the way they're going to conduct their search for new ballpark. And now the way they're going to conduct their team and run their team. I want to see it. I want to see it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I can tell you when, I don't know how many years ago this would be probably anywhere between six and eight years, Dave, I would say. Yeah. I uh, had some conversations with some people in the A's, like high ups in the A's front office and different things and negotiations with stuff here at the station and deals and all that kind of stuff. And I think payroll was brought up and, and the thought was from then, and some of these people aren't even with the A's anymore, but was once the Howard terminal thing goes through, like once they get that finalized, that's kind of when they want to map Right. And have everything going forward and, and really launch and have the team ready to go. And then boom. Okay. That was eight years ago. Do you remember the number as to how far apart the uh, <sighs> A's in Oakland were on the Howard terminal deal? 97 yeah. million. Yep. You remember how much the, uh, that's what oh, they were charging. Oakland was going to charge yeah. 97 million. Mm-hmm. Rents. Nice little callback. By the yeah. way, uh, speaking of weird collectibles as we had to break, I do own one uh, and I, I should bring it in at some point. I have from 2022, I have a card. I have a, tr- a collectible card that has, you know, they have like game worn stuff. Yeah. I have a piece of the material from one of the boxing gloves that Will Smith wore in Ali and a piece of the jacket that Chris Rock wore at the Oscars. It is literally a Will Smith slaps Chris Rock collectible card with both. You okay. have that? I have that. I have it at home. I have to ask my wife where it's probably next to the Berlin Wall. I'll have her, I'll, I'll bring it in. But it has a piece of, of uh will smith's glove that he wore in ali and a piece of the suit that chris rock wore what's cool is that the uh it's because it's random so i have uh, a bit i think it's of the e and everlast off uh-huh. of the off the, which like if you get a piece of the sure it's, i have no it's probably worth absolutely nothing but i saw it, i was like this is the dumbest thing i've ever seen and i think they were like 30 bucks a pop so i grabbed one so yeah i can completely understand chris this sent, seems like a cash grab chris sent me this during the uh during that that, that clip but right now uh, although i i expect this will change uh rare oj simpson murder one cards complete Jeez. set of 10 sealed pack it's uh it starts with oj's mugshot 
moves on to a, a, a magazine cover or something of him pleading not guilty. Currently selling the complete set of 10 for $30. Hmm. I'll bet that goes up. Yeah. Although Chris does seem to think we were having a conversation during the break. He does not think that the OJ Simpson retrospective is going to last. The conversation is going to last as, as much as uh, I believe it will. I just don't believe that the attention span in the country is as long as it once for was. anything. Yeah. Yeah. I think once we get to the weekend, past the weekend, like Monday. Uh -huh. So you don't think that our country is the type of country that would want to revisit a massively huge part of their history and relive it all over again and have conversations and this happened then and now let's do an update. I Not only do I think they're going to relive it, I, I I told him, I said, I'm telling you, there's going to be at least a handful of news specials. On the, it's, there's going to be a CNN retrospective, O.J. Simpson, dead at 76. Like, I think that's going to be this weekend. I Yeah. I, 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 what did I say? A week, two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. You think, you think, you think, you think two things are going to uh, end I mean, this I week? think you're going to have stuff on like CNN and Fox News and all of them just because there's nothing to talk about for 24 hours. But yeah, they need to fill all that time from the eclipse. <laughs> they got nothing to talk about this weekend. I don't think it's going to be like ESPN. I don't think it's going to be talking about it on Monday. I, I, I Okay. Well, we got to go to break. True or false on one of the three major ESPN networks. They will rerun within the next week or two the complete OJ oh, yeah. Simpson for 30. Yes. Yeah, I, think, I think that's what they'll probably do. And like a sit down with Bob Lee or something. Mm -hmm. Wait, is Bob still with us? Yes. Okay, good. Hope so. God, thank God. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, crosstalk, styles and walk-ins, celebrity birthdays, and more. Don't forget, this time tomorrow, Friday Fun and Games. Yes. And believe it or not, I might have a surprise for us tomorrow as well. I'm not going to say what it is, but I think you'll all like it. You can tell me. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, did you hear me? Now I'm missing out on food in that. Mm, sorry. Puppy doesn't like you. Crosstalk coming up right after this. You never know what you might hear when listening to a Sacramento Kings game. Out of Keegan, going for another triple. Man, is he feeling it. Keegan, can he do it? Yes, there's number 11, Keegan Murray. Keegan steps back. He just knocked down his 12th three-pointer, a Kings franchise record. He's got 45 points. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with Sacktown Sports and the Sacktown Sports app. Hey, it's Carmichael Day for American Energy Heating and Air with a question. Have you recently had a technician diagnose your HVAC system? Have you were a bit surprised at how much it cost, or did something seem off about their quote? Because at American Energy, they take pride in giving you honest, straightforward solutions to get that system up and running. Have their qualified technicians come out and give you a free second opinion. It's free. You got nothing to lose but some dollars off of that original quote. They're making the uncomfortable comfortable. They've been doing it since 1981, serving the greater Sacramento area, A-plus with the better business bureau that's why they keep having customers coming back for more and more and more you can call them and set that appointment at 916-520-9990 that's 916-520-9990 or americanenergyair.com hey there you and i'll too i see you by the fiber and laxatives you still using those to manage your constipation with belly pain if your symptoms keep coming back, you may have irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC. So you may need more than over-the-counter treatments to manage it. Ask your doctor about how Linzess can help you get ahead of it. Linzess linaclotide is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. It's not a laxative. It's a once-daily pill that helps you get ahead of your symptoms. It's proven to help you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Learn more at linzess.com or call 1-800-L-A-N-Z-E-S-S. -S. 
Power Business Technology is proud to be 100% independent, locally owned, and managed Toshiba Copier Dealer. Local ownership cuts out the red tape, allowing ourselves to never be too busy to personally answer the call when our clients need us. Recognized for excellence in service execution, training, and customer service, we're proud to be named a 2022 Toshiba ProMasters Elite Dealer. Contact us today for all of your business printing needs at 844-POWER-BC. That's 844-769-3729 or visit us at powercopiers.com. Golf to Go is brought to you by the Hagen Oaks Golf Super Shop. Here's Frank LaRosa. Everywhere you look, someone is always telling you how to get more fit. While we may feel like we're fit, we can all get fitter. Maybe you have a favorite pair of jeans that don't fit anymore, or maybe you just want to lower your blood pressure a bit. Here are a few suggestions. Walk. Walk more. Walk more rounds. Walk to work. Walk to the store. Walk the dog, but walk. Strengthening the most important muscles in the golf swing, your glutes. Even Tiger couldn't fire his. Buy a foam roller and knead the muscles of your body three times a week, especially your hips. You can do this while you watch television. Eat more vegetables and potato chips and carrot cake don't count. Stabilize the muscles of your core by raking leaves or sweeping floors and eliminate soda, especially the ones with artificial sweeteners. Maybe you'll be able to take a little bigger turn. Maybe you won't get tired around the 15th hole. Either way, you're going to be much happier with yourself. That's your golf to go. I'm Frank LaRosa. It's time for the news of the day. The latest headlines, the biggest stories, hard hitting analysis. Yeah, this is none of those things. And now, here's Carmichael Dave and Jason Ross. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Four, four, four. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, Chris Watkins, how into the Masters are you? Um, two and a half. Alan Siles? I would say eight. Give me my Zonts. Give me Rory. They're all kind of Zonts, aren't they? Yeah, there's some big boys. Who? Who is Bryson big? Brooks. Bryson's big, but. Bryson Brooks. Bryson Brooks. Tiger. What are they, six foot? Is that big? I think Bryson's big. I don't know about the rest of those. See, Brooks Kepka. Dustin Johnson's tall. Uh, yeah, Dustin's a big. Yeah, Dustin's a tall dude. Zalatoris. Yeah. Uh, big little, big Brooks Kepka, as they call him, is six feet. That's right. Big <laughs> uh, <Stick>, though. Is <laughs> speaking about girth. <laughs> uh, big Bryson is six one. Big too. And uh, finally, who's the guy we voted as the biggest? Dustin Johnson. Uh, Dustin. Six three. Hey, six four. I told you. Okay, I, big. Uh, big is that too you. big? Big. Yeah, I, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see a lot of tall golfers that do well. At least not that I can yeah. think of. Uh, by the way, Tiger Woods will be teeing off at twelve fifty four. There is quite the uh, log jam up top at uh, three under. Uh, Scheffler looks tall too, though. I don't think he is, but Scotty I'll check. Scheffler. Eric Van Roy and Bryson DeChambeau and two others tied at uh, three under. I always like to look down here at, oh, yeah, look at this. Like, Luke List is already plus four. How bad does that feel? Like, you just, I mean, he could come back from that. It's a good day for me. <laughs> yeah, I'd be love it. Four over. <laughs> yeah, four. Seriously. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm going to love this answer. Hey, where were you? Okay. Uh -huh. Do you even remember yep. during the O.J. Simpson car chase? Uh, I don't believe I was born yet. <laughs> I, like I said, I what, what I day was it? Because it was 1995, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, 94. 94. 94. Oh, yeah, it wasn't born. Honestly, I was proper. 1994, Chris Rillard knows where I was. I was watching Mighty Ducks somewhere. That's what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Good right. call. Yeah, Thank great you. call. Uh, great call. I think it's strange that me and Alan have the same taste in <laughs> <It's really laughs> early kids, 90s movies. For who? Uh, today is National Cheese Fondue Day. I haven't had that in a while. My mom used to make it like once a year, but it was kind of a cheese fondue. It was just like Velveeta and mm. sausage and stuff, and we dip croutons. In I mean, it. you ever go to Melting Pot downtown? Uh, I have. Very, very it, fun. It is a, it is the most expensive place yes. you'll ever cook your own food, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it is. it is a blast. It's that, really it's fun. like Korean barbecue yeah. kind of like, and I enjoy that. We'll do that yeah. once a year. You just go. They yep. just, Korean barbecue brings you out like trays of meat mm -hmm. and you just throw it on the little grill in front yeah, of you i love it it's fine yeah yeah it's, love good. It. it's a good time mm -hmm. they uh, uh a little hack bring a little thing of pam with you and you spray it so your stuff doesn't stick Ooh. do they allow that oh i was thinking that yeah, yeah. No, um Might cause a fire 
It might cause a fire. I always get bad luck at those places, and the grill is always is always not as hot, and everyone else is just sizzling all around us. You know what I mean? They, they've got the little thing underneath. You can turn it up. You're not supposed to do. That. Oh well. Oh. Oh well. <laughs> Dave doesn't follow. Your way right away. Uh, and finally, today is National uh, Barbershop Quartet Day. It's always been a, a bucket list thing. I've always wanted to do a, sing a song in a barbershop quartet. I think maybe a blast. What song would it be? I don't know. One of them, do up, do I? One of those. Is that yeah. from like people used to sing in barbershops? Yeah. Uh, like that oh. would be your entertainment? Maybe. Or is it because they wear the red and white striped shirts? That's probably more like the it. straw hats. That was just before LeBron and MJ debates. What? They just do that in barbershops. In the barbershops? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's hello, my baby. Hello, my baby. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, also, uh, and then we'll move to celebrity birthdays. Here's a real random video if you guys want to uh, just kill some time today, but it's incredibly right. interesting. On YouTube, they actually have the original studio session for the Chili's Baby Back Rib song, oh. and it shows the group that the, the guys oh, really? that say, yes. Not they, what you think they look like. Well, I don't know how to answer that. Um Because no. I, I don't know, okay. right? I feel like that's a dangerous <laughs> thing. Oh, uh, right. I don't know. I didn't. I had no idea, but it shows like it's just really interesting to see them actually cutting the song, and it's a group of yes, that's it. It's a group of older gentlemen. It sure is. I thought you, it was Shaq. And you got Shaq. one guy going, "I got my baby." That is Shaq. I thought it was. Wait, what is Shaq? Is Shaq in there? Oh well, then maybe that's not. It it. I don't like remember Shaq. Shaq being in there. And then the other ones come maybe in. It's the and there's I mean, like, <laughs> what a great jingle. They still use it to Jingle this day. Jingle King over here. I know. Yeah. Jingle King over there. Up with that. No, it's pretty good, that one. I got I get You'll credit. It's pretty good, that one. It's pretty good, that one. That one's approved. If you're into those kind of things. The one that's been around for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Do you remember the boxing historian who passed away uh, about five, ten years ago, Burt Sugar? Mm -mm. Wore the hat, and then, well, then this story won't make sense, because he, he dabbled in jingles. He wrote the N-E-S-T-L-E-S, -E Nestle makes the very best jingle. See, okay, we were just talking about this on the show because Chris, and I believe it was Simone, was getting on me. They were getting on me because when people say, hey, have you seen X or Y? I will say I did, even if I didn't, just what? to keep it going. And Chris and Simone were saying, hey, you can't do If you say, remember that part in this movie? I'll just say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dave just did that with Burt Sugar. How much better and smoother would that have gone if I just said, oh, yeah, of course. This is a really weird bonding moment. I do the same thing. Thank you. I really honestly do. I almost feel like it's polite. That's thank not, you. That's uh, not a checkmark to have uh, but, there, Alan. No, thank you. <laughs> In reality, here's the reason I do it. Because if I say no, I, I'm not familiar with it, there's an 84% chance they're going to make me watch something. And I don't want to do that because I really don't Let care enough about it. Yeah. yeah, I don't care enough about right, it. But agenda. They, right, they're, exactly. So I say, yeah, yeah. It's like if, if my <laughs> wife or a friend says, oh, did I I told you the story about the thing with the frog and the dog? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great story. Because I don't want to hear the story yeah, to yeah. begin with. Yeah. I want to go back to doing what I'm doing. Yeah. What if they say, you remember that story? So what do you think I should have done? I'd be like, I honestly, that's where I'm really, really good. What do, you, what do I think you should have done? And I don't know what the story is. I think you should have trusted your instincts, to be honest with you. But I think you made the right decision. <laughs> this is my guy. Yeah, no, 100%. Anything to get out of a conversation that I don't want to be a part Birds of. Birds and Zonts unite. You, yeah, absolutely. Oh, beautiful wow. You ever fake a phone Red call and get blue, out of a conversation? Look at that. No. no. Oh, God. Phone bit? Oh, 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 hey. I got, oh, I got, I got to take bit. this. Let me call you. No, back. Alan does that literally all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just not to get out of conversation. Or if you're on the phone, I got, I got to look cool. If you're on the phone with somebody, then, then yeah. you go, know, oh, oh, I got to take this. Let me call you right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back. We call that something here. Uh, crumble cookies brings you celebrity birthdays. Celebrity birthdays and crumble cookies are a match made in heaven. Get yourself some today. Crumble cookies. Mm. Not a great celebrity birthday day today, but uh, let's do this. Um, on this date, in what year? The movie Draft Day. By the way, your thoughts on the movie Draft Day, you two. One of the best that's ever. <laughs> I haven't seen it. It's a good movie. I haven't yes. seen it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Jason, I forgot that you, you stand for Draft Day. I will day. say once again that Draft Day is the face off of sports movies. One, so it's great. It is completely, it's so unbelievable that it's terrible. Okay. Thanks. What year was it put out? Uh, 2010. I was going to say 2011. Uh, 2014. I believe I was coming back from England watching it on the plane, Ooh, so I'm going to say 2014. Yeah, 2014 is correct. I was at the station. Uh, hey, happy birthday today to Jake. Chilling State Farm. LaMotta. State Farm. From here. LaRavia. Local. High school legend. Jake. Gaden. Played for your football team. Jake. 
Oh, Ronnie. Oh, yeah. 26. 26? Okay. 27. 28. 25. We have a correct answer. 28. Hey, wow, he's old. That's it. Hey, okay. Well, we pitched a good day to not be on top of it because there wasn't a lot there. Yeah. Uh, Wall to wall Masters coverage. uh, Big uh, game tonight. If uh, everything goes wrong, there's a very realistic chance the Kings will be in the nine seed in a three way tie with the Lakers and the Warriors tonight. So you guys can cover that and more. It's Watkins. It's Styles. It's the fastest growing morning show in all of uh, whatever Styles and Watkins. I don't care. Sacktown Sports. You never know what you might hear when listening to a Sacramento Kings game. Out of Keegan. Going for another triple. Man, is he feeling it. Keegan. Can he do it? Yes. There's number 11. Keegan Murray. Keegan steps back. He just knocked down his 12th three-pointer, a Kings franchise record. He's got 45.